Wingman Joker thank you for listening to this channel and please support the channel. Please subscribe. Chapter 100 Coach's Discussion After the end of the match, Coach Tanaka approached manager Nozomi with rather irritated look on his face to congratulate manager Nozomi for his team's victory over his own. Congratulations Nozomi. Coach Tanaka congratulated Nozomi while gritting his teeth. Thank you Tanaka. Like you said my team didn't concede three goals this time around. And I'm sure it's all because of your well wishes. So thank you very much Tanaka. Manager Nozomi replied with a smile on his face. Listening to Nozomi's words, Coach Tanaka's mouth twitched a little. And even though he was on the verge of exploding, he kept his cool and replied with a pretentious smile on his face, it's all because of your players. So please don't give me the credit for your team's victory. Maintaining his pretentious smile, he then began to rummage his mind to think of some excuses to walk away. All right, I remembered that I needed to discuss something with our principal today. So I'll take my leave first. Nervously saying such, Coach Tanaka turned around and walked away in a hurry, without looking back. But it's Sunday today, manager Nozomi mumbled dumbfoundedly, but Coach Tanaka didn't reply anything and simply kept on walking away while pretending he didn't hear anything at all. Later in the evening of that same day, at around 4.30 p.m. Hiro and his friends were seen walking towards the stadium of Kawasaki Frontale dressed in black and blue jersey. In front of them, a lot of people dressed in the jersey of Kawasaki Frontale Club were also gathered around the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium, smiling and singing while carrying the banners of the club. Another batch of people who were dressed in red and blue jersey were also gathered around the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium. The people dressed in red and blue jersey were the fans of FC Tokyo. And all those people were rushing towards the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium to witness the match between Kawasaki Frontale Club and FC Tokyo. They were gathered there to show their support for their respective teams. Because of the friendly match which took place during daytime, the coaches had exempted all the players of U15 from evening training to give them some time to recuperate from the fatigue they suffered during the match. While some players stayed in the dorm, some went outside. And Hiro and his friends were among those players who decided to go out. Impressed by Hiro's performance during the friendly match, manager Nozomi had gifted him a ticket for the match between Kawasaki Frontale and FC Tokyo which was going to take place later in the evening at 5 o'clock. However since he didn't want to alone, he requested manager Nozomi to provide him with three more tickets for his friends. Manager Nozomi who was in a very good mood agreed to his request and provided him with three more tickets. Making use of the ticket provided by manager Nozomi, Hiro decided to go and watch the match between Kawasaki Frontale Club and FC Tokyo also popularly known as Tamagawa Classico with his friends. Sounding all excited, Yuya who was a die-hard fan of Kawasaki Frontale Club spoke while walking towards the stadium, mark my words Leandro Damiao's gonna be the man of the match for today's match. And he's gonna score another goal today. The player whom Yuya was mentioning about was a player of Brazilian origin. And at that 21-20 second season, he was in a phenomenal form. Scoring a record-breaking 15 goals, he was dominating the top scorer list of J1 League. Previously playing for clubs like Santos, International, Real Betis, Flamengo and many more, he was a talented player of Brazilian origin. Yeah he's great, but don't forget about Rayo Hatate. I'm sure he's gonna show us another brilliant performance. Today, his speed, his passing and his work rate. It's like Mua. While excitedly praising one of the player of Kawasaki Frontale, Shunta made a kissing gesture. They are both great player. But mark my words Kaoru Mitoma's gonna be one of the best player in the world within few years. Shun who had been following Mitoma's progress since some years joined Yuya and Shunta's conversation by bringing the name of Mitoma. Mitoma, he was indeed one of the impressive player in previous year. And he did earn himself a transfer to a Premier League team. But isn't he loaned to Union SG this season? Yuya intoned while recalling things about Mitoma. At the season 2021, Mitoma was honored as one of the best player in the league and at 21-22 season he was bought by Brighton for a measly amount of £3 million. After that he was loaned for the entirety of 21-22 season to Union SG. After bringing the topic of Mitoma, since their beliefs contradicted with each other, they then began to argue with each other. No one willing to back down, each and every single one of them were adamant about their opinions. And because of that unwillingness to back down, the argument was stretching even further. Hiro who was also present there was observing them arguing with each other, without saying anything. Since he knew about the future, he didn't feel Lyle joining in on the argument. Unable to come to a truce, Yuya then decided to ask for Hiro's opinion. Okay, 
Okay, then let's ask Hiro's opinion. Yuya suggested while turning his gaze towards Hiro. Let's do that. The two of them nodded their head and agreed to his suggestion. Hiro, do you think that Mitoma's gonna become one of the best player in the world within few years? Yuya asked in a serious tone with his gaze fixated at Hiro. Without any sort of hesitation Hiro replied, yes. Hearing Hiro's words, Shun's face lit up all of a sudden and a wide smile formed on his face. He then spoke while sounding all excited, see I told you. Yuya and Shunta both of their face darkened as they sulked their head after hearing Hiro's opinion. Both of them mumbled while sounding somewhat disappointed, how can you be so sure of it Hiro? Showing no changes in his facial expression, Hiro then replied with a straight face, because I can see the future. Believing his words, 1838, ha ha ha, why do you all look so serious? It was a joke, a joke, saying such Hiro burst into laughter. His words left all of them speechless. Their eyes wide open and their mouth agape, they were believing his words. Ha ha ha, why do you all look so serious? It was a joke, a joke, saying such Hiro burst into laughter. That was a joke, damn, but after watching you play, if you tell me that it's your second time in life, I would have even believed it. Yuya mumbled while heaving a sigh of relief. Right, the other two standing beside expressed their agreement. At an office at the same time when Hiro and his friends were heading to Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium, manager Nozomi and manager Makoto were sitting opposite to each other at an office room. Consisting of an immaculate table, few chairs, a whiteboard, a flower pot and few stationaries inside the drawer of the table, the office room was neat and clean. Brother is too talented to play in U15, Nozomi spoke while looking at his brother. Understanding the meaning behind his brother's sentence, manager Makoto spoke, but he's still only 12. We can't promote him, he'll turn 13 next year brother. We need to promote him to U18 team. If we want to win the Takamato Premier League then we need to promote him brother. Brother is too talented for his age. Nozomi tried to reason with his brother. After hearing Nozomi's response, Makoto began. To ponder, brother, we need to use his talent. We can't let him rot at U15. He's way above their level. If not for the age requirement to play at professional level, I'd have even suggested him to the senior team. Nozomi continued, however still after hearing so much from his brother, Makoto kept on pondering. Since he couldn't make decisions carelessly, he was hesitant to decide right away. Finally after thinking for a while, Makoto opened his mouth, but will he be alright against guys who'll be like four, five years older than him? Makoto mumbled with a concerned expression on his face. He too wanted to promote Hiro to the U18 team, however he was also afraid of injuring Hiro. I know that you're about him brother. But we still have more than six months left for the league to start. So in the meantime if we work on his physicality then I'm sure that we can prepare him to play against those tougher and stronger than him. Nozomi intoned, brother he's meant for the world. I can see a world class player in him. So instead of holding him back we should motivate him and push him so that he can fulfill his potential. Nozomi added. After hearing Nozomi's words, Makoto rose from his seat. He then started to walk away from the table. Witnessing Makoto's unusual behavior, Nozomi exasperated, Brother, where are you going? Didn't you say that we should motivate him and help him improve? I did, but how is you walking away without saying anything's gonna help him improve? Asked Nozomi looking somewhat dumbfounded. I was going to fetch Eric's number. Since he's his agent, we'd need to discuss with him before we can make any decisions replied Makoto while towards the closet. Chapter 101 Hero's Decision After having his dinner, at around 8 p.m. in the afternoon, inside his dorm room, Hiro was lying on his bed with his face facing the ceiling. At that time Shun, Yuya and Shunta, all three of them were gathered in Yuya's room conversing about the earlier match between Kawasaki Frontale and FC Tokyo. While staring at the ceiling above, absent-mindedly, Hiro was pondering about his performance in the earlier match against Chiba Middle School. I should work on my passes more. And I should be more mindful of my surrounding. Even during that first goal, I couldn't see the run of Hidetaka. Had I realized him being behind me I would have behaved differently. He thought while thinking and analyzing his earlier actions. Although dribbling and pace are my main arsenal. I'm playing as a playmaker. And despite being a playmaker my assist stats are not so good. So I think I should focus more on my vision, passes and physicality for the time being. Despite performing really well by contributing four goals and an assist in the earlier friendly match, Hiro was still not satisfied with his performance. Reflecting on his actions, he was trying to learn from his mistakes. 
Ah right, I still have that unused golden ticket. Maybe I should use it now. Mumbling such, he rose up from his bed. System acti, knock, knock, and just as he was about to activate the system, he heard a knock on his door. Since he knew that Shun wouldn't be back before 9 or 10, he was baffled by that sudden knock on the door so late in the night. Hearing the knock, he turned his attention towards the door and answered meekly, Who's this? It's me Yugo, lazily answered Yugo from outside the door. Oh, it's Yugo, releasing a deep breath, he then walked towards the door and opened the door. Outside the door Yugo was standing dressed in his pajamas. His pajamas consisted of a wiggly long hat and baggy shirt and pant. His fox-like eyes were almost closed as if he had just woken up from a sleep and he was still feeling sleepy. And even after, opening his door, Yugo was simply standing there without uttering a single word, as if he couldn't see or hear him. Yes Yugo do you have something to say? Hiro mumbled, but Yugo remained completely silent with his chin lowered. Maybe he's here to complain about my plays in the earlier game. Hiro pondered while looking at Yugo silently standing in front of his door with his chin lowered. He then offered him to come inside his room, or do you like to come inside and discuss what you were going to say? Yawn tilde tilde, hearing Hiro's words he yawned before opening his mouth to say something. So he was only dozing. Hiro thought after seeing him yawn. And after yawning, Yugo replied, no it's fine. I was just here to deliver the message from the coach. He wants you to come to his office. Me, why does he want me to go to his office this late in the night? Hiro questioned sounding somewhat confused. Yawn tilde tilde tilde, Yugo yawned again before replying, how would I know? He just asked me to deliver this message to you. I've finished my task, so it's up to you whether you want to go or not. Saying such he walked away. While watching Yugo vanish from his sight, he pondered, strange. Why would the coach want to meet me alone this late in the night? Maybe he also wants to talk about my plays. Guess I'll continue the draw after a short trip to the coach's office. Thinking such, he then left for the coach's office after closing his door. With nobody present in the hallway, the hallway leading to the coach's office was ghastly silent. Some moths were fluttering around the LED bulbs above the ceiling. After reaching near to the coach's office, he took a peek at Coach Nozomi's office. But there was no light coming from his office. Instead the light was coming from Manager Makoto's office. Noticing the light coming from beneath the gaps of the door of the manager Makoto's office, he then walked towards manager Makoto's office and knocked the door. Knock, knock, yes come inside Hiro. Just as he knocked the door of manager Makoto's office, he heard manager Nozomi's voice from inside the door. Why is manager Nozomi replying from inside manager Makoto's office? He thought before opening the door. And as he opened the door to Makoto's office, he noticed both manager Makoto and manager Nozomi seated at the chair opposite to each other. Noticing both the coaches, he froze at the door. Come inside, we were waiting for you, replied Makoto, the chubby old man. Yes, excuse me then, mumbling such, he entered the room while closing the door behind him. Manager Nozomi then stood up from his seat and offered his seat to Hiro. Please sit here, saying such, he walked towards him. It's all right sir, I'm comfortable with standing, saying such, Hiro tried to refuse his hospitality. But manager Nozomi insisted him to sit down, since they were going discuss something really important with him. Giving in to manager Nozomi's insistence, he then took the seat and sat down. And just as he sat down, manager Makoto in front opened his mouth to speak, I'll be direct with you hero. We're thinking of promoting you to the U18 team. And I know this sounds ridiculous but please hear us before deciding. Both the managers were fearful of him rejecting their proposal. After all it hadn't even been a month since he had arrived at the hostel. And he had only played a single match with the U15 team thus far. His age was also another matter of concern. Since there was also a possibility that he'd have to face against several professional players who were already playing professionally for a club playing in J-1. They were fearful that he might reject their proposal because of those reasons. But what they didn't know was that he was more than willing and prepared to play for the U18 team. Chapter 102 Write What I Needed Hearing manager Makoto's words, Hiro turned his head towards Nozomi who was standing beside him. Nozomi then blinked both his eyes while looking at him and nodded his head. I know it'll be tough for you. But Hiro I believe that you won't improve much in U15 team. And we've also talked about it with your agent. And he said that he'll go with your decision. So please hear us once before you make your decision. Makoto exclaimed. Upon hearing his words, Hiro nodded his head and straightened his back. 
Manager Makoto then began to explain about the pros and cons of him playing for the U18 team. Although the league will be a bit hard for you considering your age. But we still have more than six months left for the league to start. And I believe that we can prepare you both physically and mentally for the league within that time period. Makoto spoke with a serious expression on his face. That's right hero. We'll train you separately after the training session and prepare you for your Premier League debut. Nozomi who was standing right beside him, spoke with confidence and expressed his desire. While both of them were presenting their opinions and ideas, Hiro was ardently listening to their opinions and ideas without uttering a single word. So what do you say Hiro? Do you want to stay in U15 team for another year or do you want to play for U18 from next season onwards? Makoto finished his sentence with a question. And as both of them finished presenting their ideas, Hiro lowered his gaze towards the table in front and began to ponder. Or so they thought after looking at him. However he was simply acting. He was acting to make them believe that he wasn't making his choices rashly. From the moment he heard from manager Makoto's mouth that he was going to be promoted to the U18 team, he had already made his decision. I believe that you both are making such decision for my well-being. So I'll go with your decision sir. Hiro replied without any changes in his facial expression. Although he was jumping and singing inside his head, celebrating like crazy, he didn't show any reactions up front and maintained a poker face in front of the coaches. Great, their face lit up as they intoned excitedly with a wide smile on their faces. Then we'll begin your training from tomorrow onwards. Also you'll be training with the U18 from tomorrow onwards as well. So don't go to the U15 pitch, accidentally. Mumbled manager Makoto with a wide grin on his face. Listening to the words of manager Makoto, Hiro nodded his head. He then lowered his head and thanked both the coaches, thank you for providing me with such an opportunity sirs. I won't let you down. After leaving the coach's office, he made his way towards his room, jumping and humming silently in joy along the way. And as he entered his room, he found nobody present in the room, which meant Shun was still at Yuya's room. I never expected that I'd be playing with professional players so soon. Hiro mumbled while sitting atop his bed. Since the clubs could play their academy players from 15 years onward, there were some players in the U18 team of every professional team who can also be regarded as professional players. Takafusa Kubo played a professional league at the age of 15. So let's not get overwhelmed Hiro. He said to himself while trying to calm him down. All right, let's spin the roulette. System activate. System activated. And as the system activated the same holographic blue panel of the system appeared in front of his eyes. By that time, he was already used to seeing the blue panel of the system. He then performed few clicks and headed towards the roulette section. With a giant roulette wheel, the page was the same as it was before. One golden ticket available. Do you like to use your ticket? Yes Hero spoke to himself. And as he agreed to consume the golden ticket, the roulette wheel began to spin. After spinning for a while, it landed on a card and a golden card popped up in front of him. Impatient as he was, he immediately clicked on the card. Congratulations host for obtaining the passing sense of Kevin De Brown B. Talent Description Activating the talent can significantly improve host's passing, vision and IQ permanently. After noticing the talent he drew from the system, his pupils enlarged as he abruptly rose from his bed. Damn freaking awesome, I freaking love you system. He mumbled in ecstasy and threw his arms towards the sky. Just some moments ago I was thinking of improving my passing and vision. And now I drew such an OP talent. He continued. After mumbling such an ecstasy for a while, he paused all of a sudden. Squinting his eyes, he then glared at the system, but how can the system be so generous to grant me such an overpowering talent? And what's with that alphabet behind the title of the talent? He was somewhat skeptical about the generosity of the system. That's the grade of the talent. Since the original passing talents of Debrauna is way more op. Because of your present stats the system has deemed that you're still not eligible to own such talents. Thus the system has purposely lowered the rank of the talent to fit your capability at the moment. Hence you can only use part of the passing talent Debrauna possesses at the moment. Meaning you'll not be able to miraculously play on the level of Debrauna. So stop fantasizing and work your ass off. WTF. Did the system just diss me? He mumbled while contorting his face after listening to the description provided by the system. Oi system, did you just diss me? Feeling mocked by the system, he questioned the system. No, I only described you what you wanted. Spoke the system, yeah, indeed that's what it did. Mumbled Hero dumbfoundedly, since it was speaking the fact after all. But from when did system start speaking like this? 
Hiro mumbled, but the system didn't reply anything at all. He kept on questioning the system time and again but he didn't get the answer he was looking for. Arg, let's just stop. It has always been unpredictable. So there's no point asking it. Mumbling such, he gave up questioning the system. Chapter 103 Revealing the News After inhaling and exhaling few deep breaths, Hiro calmed himself. He then walked towards his door to lock the door. And as he locked the door, he walked towards his bed and sat atop his bed with his legs crossed. Activate the talent, he murmured while briefly closing his eyes. He was afraid of the potential drawbacks from activating the talent. He was afraid that he'd have to suffer from the same pain which he suffered during the consumption of the muscle-enhancing elixir. And he wasn't willing to show that pathetic side of him to his friend. That's why he locked the door to prepare himself for the activation of the talent. Talent activated. As he heard the notification from the system, he squeezed his eyelids even more tightly to brace himself for the sudden impact. Tightening his muscles and clenching his fist, he remained still for some moments. 1 seconds, 2 seconds, 59 seconds, 60 seconds. A whole minute passed but nothing happened to him. After staying still for a whole minute, he opened his eyes, loosened his muscles and unclenched his fist. His palms were sweaty from clenching his fist tightly for that entire minute. Feeling confused, he murmured. Nothing happened, did the process fail, or maybe the system is malfunctioning. The system is working perfectly fine. And no the process has not failed. The talent has already been activated. Since it's a talent and not an item, you don't have to fear the possible drawbacks. Only when consuming the items, you might experience some drawback. Replied the system after hearing his concerns. Oh, I see. I was worrying for nothing. Ha ha ha. Acting all surprised, he then revealed an awkward smile on his face. Then let's see how much my stat has improved. Saying such, he activated the system to check his stats. New stat vision unlocked. Attributes. Physical. 56 one hundredths grade. C plus. Dribbling. 84 one hundredths grade. A. Pace. 67 one hundredths grade. B. Passing. 79 one hundredths grade. B plus. Shooting. 73 one hundredths grade. B plus. Defending. 41 one hundredths grade. C. Mentality. 64 one hundredths grade. B. IQ. 82 one hundredths grade. A. Vision. 64 one hundredths grade. B. Overall grade. B plus. His face lit up as he witnessed his stats. With his eyes opened wide and mouth agape, he exclaimed, Whoa! My stats have increased by a lot. Knock, knock. At that same time, he heard a knock on his door. Yo man, what are you doing with the door closed? Spoke Shun from outside the door. Meditating, he replied tersely and got out from his bed. He then walked towards the door to unlock the door. And as soon as he unlocked the door, Shun came rushing inside. Hurriedly walking towards Hiro's bed, he began to look underneath his bed. After that he looked under his bedsheets. As if he was searching for something, he kept on searching here and there. Noticing Shun's weird behavior, Hiro questioned, what exactly are you looking for? While still in the process of searching his bed, Shun replied, Aero manga. I'm sure you've hidden some hentai manga. So bring it out right now. As the saying goes, sharing is caring. So share it. WTF. Why would I hide such vile things? Answered Hiro with a flustered face. Finally after searching almost everywhere, he stopped after not finding anything. See I told you, I don't have such things. Hiro mumbled with a satiated expression on his face while looking at Shun. But, but, Shun shuddered while standing in front of Hiro's bed, staring at the bed in daze. Now move aside, I need to sleep. Saying such, Hiro began to tidy his bed. After that he hopped onto his bed and fell asleep. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Ring, ring. At around 5 in the morning, Hiro's eyes opened to the sound of the alarm clock. Pretty excited to train with U18 players, he hopped out of his bed and hit the snooze button of the alarm clock. Shun who was a heavy sleeper was still sleeping on his bed. Getting out from his bed, he grabbed his toothbrush and towel. After that he left his room and headed towards the bathroom to freshen up. Rinsing his face with cold water, he felt rejuvenated. And as he finished rinsing his face, he wiped off the water with the towel he was carrying. After that he went back to his room to get his cleats and training bibs before heading to the pitch. While heading towards the pitch, he noticed Yuya on the hallway. Seeing him, Yuya waved his hands and spoke in a cheerful tone, fancy seeing you so early in the morning. Yeah, I slept quite early yesterday. Hiro replied while catching up to Yuya. 
From the very beginning of his stay at the hostel, he had been waking up a little late because of the late night conversation he had with Shun. And since he had slept quite early yesterday, he also woke up early in the morning. Ha ha ha, yeah, I guess it's because of Shun. I'm sure that he must have kept you awake till late in the night with his nonsensical chatterings. Yuya joked, and he must still be sleeping right. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if he was a pig in his previous life. Hiro replied with a straight face. Conversing and joking, they made their way towards the pitch. And as they reached the door of the U18 pitch, Hiro paused all of a sudden. Noticing him standing in front of the door of U18 pitch, Yuya spoke, what happened? Why are you standing over there? We need to head a little further. Did you already forget about that? Ha ha ha, Yuya joked. For a few seconds Hiro didn't reply anything. He was thinking about how to break the news of his promotion to his friend. Upon noticing the expression on the face of Hiro, Yuya felt something was troubling Hiro. Finally after thinking for a while, he decided to tell Yuya about the truth without mixing any lies or excuses. He then spoke meekly while slightly frowning his brows, actually yesterday at around nighttime I was told by the coaches that I've been promoted to the U18 team. So, er, I'll be training with the U18 team from today onwards. Chapter 104 A Kid in U18 After revealing the news of his promotion to Yuya, Hiro slightly lifted his gaze towards Yuya to see his expression. Hiro was fearful that Yuya may not be happy about hearing about their parting, so soon. But on the contrary, with a wide smile on his face, Yuya threw himself towards Hiro and hugged him instead. Since Hiro wasn't expecting such reaction from Yuya, Hiro was startled and hence he wobbled a little while trying to catch Yuya. Yuya then while tightening his grip around Hiro's back spoke in a cheerful voice, I knew it. I knew that you'd make it. I'm so happy for you Hiro. Although we could only play briefly with each other. I've learned a lot from you Hiro. And I'll soon catch up to you as well. While congratulating him, he expressed his inner feelings. And one could tell just by listening to the tone of Yuya's voice that he was genuinely happy for Hiro. Listening to such warm words, Hiro's doubts vanished away. The sides of his lips lifted up as he revealed a smile on his face. Receiving such warm words from his friend made Hiro really happy. Thank you Yuya, Hiro thanked Yuya with a bright smile on his face. And after hugging him for a while, Yuya unwrapped his arm and let him go. Please tell Shun and Shunta about this news on my behalf. Hiro spoke while looking at Yuya. Yuya then nodded his head and spoke with a smile on his face, I will. And best of luck my friend. Thank you my friend. Hiro replied, I'll see you after training then. Saying such Yuya parted with him and headed towards the U15 pitch. Hiro too headed inside the U18 pitch. Asterisk 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 asterisk. As he entered the U18 pitch, he began to roll his eyes all over the pitch. The pitch was of the same length as that of U15 pitch. However the players were quite different. Tall, muscular and strong, not even a single one among them looked overweight. The players in the U18 pitch were simply built different. Because of the different schedule between the two teams, Hiro hadn't had much chance to meet the players of U18 team. And also since the players of U18 team minded their own business and didn't interact much with the players of U15 team, the players of U15 and the player of U18 team were almost like strangers. Almost all of the players of U18 had already arrived at the pitch for the morning training. Unlike the players at the U15 team who looked like amateurs, he could tell just by looking at those players in front of his eyes that they were all professionals. Among them there were three exceptional players who had already made their debut for the pro team. Forward Tatsuki Siko who was still only 16 years old had made his debut that year in a match with Sagan Tosu, defensive midfielder Kazuya Yamamura who was 18 years old had also made his debut briefly the year before against Nagata and Naoto Miyashiro the fourth choice goalkeeper of Kawasaki Frontale who was only 18 years old had played quite few games for the team already. Looking at those players, he murmured to himself in awe, I'm a step closer to my dream. Even before the start of the training, Hiro could feel his blood rushing and heart pumping faster. He was very excited about training with those exceptional players. Just when he was staring blankly at the players in front with a gleam in his eyes, manager Makoto appeared behind him. Lost in his thoughts, he couldn't notice the presence of Makoto behind him. After getting close to Hiro, Makoto then whispered in his ear, your blood is pumping fast right? Ah, Hiro screamed as he wobbled forward after hearing the sudden voice of Makoto behind him. And as he noticed Makoto, he spoke, please don't scare me like that coach. Ha ha ha, but I didn't scare you. Makoto replied while laughing. 
Behind him was another old man of height six feet probably in his late forties. Rectangular shaped face with monolid black eyes and dark lips, he was the positioning coach of the youth team. Ah right, this guy right behind me is Kensuke Kimura. Makoto mumbled while pointing at the guy behind him who was dressed in ash gray tracksuit with a notebook in his hand. Nice to meet you coach Kensuke. Hiro bowed his head and greeted the coach. Likewise, nice to meet you too. Kensuke replied. And as both of them finished exchanging greetings with each other, Makoto cleared his throat. Go and change your clothes hero. I'll introduce you to the players. Saying such, Makoto dismissed him. He then quickly changed his clothes in the sidelines and rushed towards the side where the players and the coaches were gathered. Upon seeing Hiro behind him, Makoto then cleared his throat and spoke, everyone pay attention now. I want to introduce you all to your new teammate. And as everybody turned their attention towards the coach, Makoto then introduced Hiro, everyone. Let's welcome your new teammate, Takahashi Hiro. And as Hiro stepped forward upon having his name introduced, the players gave him a big round of applause. I know this sudden promotion sounds a bit strange. But trust me his addition will definitely improve the team. However he's only 12 years old right now. So treat him with care. As his senior you all are responsible for fostering him. So look after him well. Saying such Makoto finished Hiro's introduction to the team. I'll be under your care. Hiro added while lowering his head. Since Hiro didn't look like 12, all of those players were assuming that he'd be at least 15 years old. But just as they heard about his real age from the mouth of the coach, all of them were shocked by that revelation. With their pupils enlarged and mouth agape, they were looking at him with big eyes. Damn, he's only 12 years old. Is coach joking with us? While some players were lamenting about coach's decision after hearing his real age. There were few players who were amused by him being so young. Interesting, murmured the center forward Tatsuki Siko with a wry smile on his face. Let's see what this genius can do murmured the starting goalkeeper Naoto Miyashiro. Chapter 105 Making them acknowledge me. After finishing his introduction, manager Makoto dismissed the players by commanding them to warm up and lossen up their body. And as everybody started to scatter around, Tatsuki Siko, the fair-skinned skinny guy with a shredded muscular body approached Hiro. I could tell that you've got a rather robust muscular body. With an amused expression on his face, Tatsuki commented while looking at him, up and down. Huh. Hiro was left dumbfounded by his sudden comments. He wasn't expecting to hear such words instead of an introduction or greeting. Since Hiro's half sleeve jersey and short shocks could hardly conceal his biceps and hamstring muscles, Sato who himself was somewhat like a gym freak couldn't help but notice his physique. Ah, sorry about saying such all of a sudden without introducing myself first. I just couldn't control myself after seeing such an extraordinary physique. Apologized Tatsuki for his sudden random comments. By the way I'm Tatsuki Siko. Nice to meet you. I'm Takahashi Hiro. Nice to meet you senior Tatsuki. Hiro replied while bowing his head to show some respect to Tatsuki. And while they were chatting, another player named Naoto Miyashiro, also the captain of the U18 team joined them. He's just obsessed with Jim. So don't mind him. By the way I'm Naoto Miyashiro, goalkeeper of the team. Spoke Naoto while introducing himself. Quickly turning his body towards Naoto, he then bowed his head and greeted Naoto, nice to meet you senior Naoto. While those two welcomed him with open arms, the same couldn't be said about the rest of the players. Maintaining their distance while occasionally stealing a peek of Hiro, they were somewhat skeptical about his promotion from U15 team at that age. Don't mind them, they'll open up to you eventually. They're probably worried about your age and talent. Spoke Naoto while reassuring him about the attitude of the rest of the players towards him. However not every single one of those faces had a concerned expression. Some had a rather mocking expression while some simply didn't give a shit about him. Right, I'm curious about your ability as well. Aren't you like too young to play in U18 team? Can you even hold your ground against other guys who are like 4 or 5 years older than you? Questioned Tatsuki out of sheer curiosity. While conversing with each other, they were performing light warm-ups exercises. Just as they were conversing with each other, they heard the voice of manager Makoto. Everybody gather up, manager Makoto yelled, turning their attention towards Makoto, they then hurried towards the manager. After everybody gathered around the manager, Makoto began to explain them about the training drills. That day's training was especially focused on shooting, finishing and passing. And as he finished explaining about the training drills, he commenced the beginning of the morning training. 
For the first training drill, the coach made them perform receive and shoot training drill individually. Placing eight cones in front of the penalty arc, the players were required to make their run from half line towards the cone and perform some high knees as fast as they could at the cone section. And after passing through the cones, coach Ken Suk supplied them with a cross from the flanks. And they were required to trap and shoot the ball towards the post. They could also simply perform one shot volley. However the post wasn't left open as there were few mannequins placed randomly in front of the post which were acting as the defender and also an obstacle between them and the goal. And the shooter was also required to score a goal against the first choice goalkeeper of U18 team who was guarding the goalpost, which further increased the difficulty of the drill. After almost every player finished their set of the drill, Hiro stepped forward for his turn. He was the last one to challenge the drill. Until his turn, the sole player who performed exceptionally well in that drill was Tatsuki Siko. Let's see what you can do, mumbled Tatsuki Siko to himself under his breath while looking at Hiro with anticipation. So you're the one mentioned by my brother, murmured a dark-haired, lanky guy who was about 5 feet 8 inches tall. His face and eyes showed no malice or concern towards Hiro. Positioning himself in a steady position, Hiro was preparing to launch himself while awaiting the whistle of the coach. Beep. And as he heard the whistle, Hiro dashed towards the cone as fast as he can. Swiftly performing high knees and passing the cone, he rushed towards the goalpost. Coach Kensuk then supplied him with the cross. The projectile of the cross was a little unpredictable because of the spin on the ball. However he still managed to trap the ball with his right leg. And as the ball bounced off his feet, he performed a volley. The ball went like a missile towards the post. Naoto, the keeper tried his best to save the ball and leapt towards the ball. However even with his long reach, he still couldn't land a touch on the ball and ended up conceding the goal. It was the only fourth goal he conceded during that training drill. The smile on the face of the players at the sidelines who were anticipating his fall quickly faded away and instead it was replaced with shock. Their eyes wide open and mouth agape, they were left speechless by his performance. Damn, I never expected him to be this good. With small bumps appearing all over his hands as if he was exposed to the cold wind, Hiro's goal gave Tatsuki goosebumps. Clap, 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 Tatsuki, the center forward and Kazuya, the defensive midfielder, both of them clapped their hands and applauded him after watching his brilliant goal. Following their lead, other players started to clap their hands as well. And after witnessing his performance firsthand, they could no longer doubt Hiro's abilities. Hearing the thundering applause of the players, Hiro knew that his skills were recognized by those experienced players in front. With the sides of their lips curling, manager Makoto and coach Kensuke both were smiling while exchanging gazes with each other. They could tell that the players of the U18 had acknowledged Hiro's talents. Kenta Yui, the lanky black-haired guy from earlier who was talking about Hiro was smiling as well. Unlike his younger brother Kota Yui who had an insecure personality, Kenta was different. Kenta was open-minded and had a professional mentality, meaning he wasn't the type of player who'd demean or insult the talented players. Instead he was the type of player who'd try to get close to the talented players to learn from them. No matter if that player was younger or older than him. And that was one of the reason why he had made it so far into professional football. There were also rumors that there were several J2 clubs who were already showing interest in him because of his talents. Although he wasn't as talented as the prodigious player of the team. He didn't let those things hold him back. And instead he pushed his limits and improved him rather than crying or acting jealous of the other's talents. And because of that unwavering mentality, nobody could doubt his hard work and his willingness to learn. Hiro then turned towards them and bowed his head. And after bowing his head, he ran towards them and joined them. The training continued normally after that unbelievable performance from Hiro. The only difference was that after that first performance, almost everybody in the team started to get friendly with him and accepted him despite his young age. Finally after few passing and shooting drills, the training came to an end with a passed pace rondo. Soaked in sweat, Hiro took off his jersey as the coach announced the end of the morning training. The coaches then ordered few of the players to pick the balls and sort the training equipments. After commanding such, they then headed out. With the data they gathered during the training, and as Hiro was preparing to head out, few of the players approached him. You're definitely talented, no wonder the coach promoted you to the U18 team despite being so young. One of the player with brown hair praised Hiro for his earlier performance. Indeed, at this pace you might debut even before us. Another player joked, now, 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 don't put such pressure on him. Remember he's still only 12 years old. 
Kazuya the defensive midfielder interrupted and reminded everyone of Hiro's age. Being the most mature player in the team, he purposely defended Hiro. The praises continued as other players made their way out of the pitch. However even after noticing his skills, there were still some players who were not happy about him joining the team. Since their spot in the team was in danger, they looked extremely anxious. And thus until the last moment, they refused to exchange any words with him. Chapter 106 Jealous Eyes Since he didn't want to cause any troubles, despite being aware of the cold stares some players were showing towards him, Hiro intentionally ignored their cold stares. And instead he only focused his attention on those who were acting friendly towards him. And it wasn't his first time getting such cold stares from the players around him. After all even during his first day at the club, he got a lot of those kind of stares. I was indeed right, look at those abs, wings and chest. With his eyes sparkling, Tatsuki spoke with a cheerful voice while walking towards him. Tatsuki then took off his jersey as well. Why is he taking off his jersey now? Hiro thought while looking at him. Tatsuki's weird behavior left everybody dumbfounded. Flaunting his abs and muscles, he then started to strike different bodybuilding poses as if he was some kind of bodybuilder. While striking a side chest pose, Tatsuki then spoke in a serious tone, as Socrates once said, it is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable. Ha 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 ha, unable to hold back their laughter, Hiro and the others burst into laughter after hearing Tatsuki's philosophical quote, instead of acting impressed. However their laughing didn't bother Tatsuki in any way and he still continued to flaunt his muscles without any stop. Let him be, he's like this, if you continue to pay attention to him, you'll get late for school. So let's leave, saying such Naoto then asked Hiro to leave the pitch with him. While exiting the pitch after the end of the morning training, Hiro turned his gaze towards the U15 pitch in hopes of finding some of his friends on the ground. However the U15 pitch was totally empty. With nobody in the pitch, their training had ended about 15 minutes earlier than theirs. Even at the canteen, he didn't meet any of his friends. Although he did find some of the reserve players from the U15 at the canteen whom he wasn't much familiar with, he didn't find any of his friends. With nothing special, that morning's breakfast consisted of some chicken breast, rice, vegetable soup and orange juice. Sitting alongside the U18 players, he had his breakfast. And maybe because of that, the reserve players from the U15 team also didn't dare to approach him. Quickly finishing his breakfast, he then headed towards his room to get dressed for the school. And after changing into his school uniform, Hiro then hurriedly rushed towards the school bus. As usual, Shun had saved a spot for him. Raising his hands above his head, Shun then gestured Hiro to come towards him. While walking towards Shun, he could feel a lot of gazes which were pointed towards him. Although getting stared at wasn't anything unusual for him. Those stares, at that moment were very different. While some of those stares were full of admiration and happiness, most of those stares were full of jealousy. Gnashing their teeth, some players were looking at him coldly as if he had robbed him of their most precious thing. However that was completely within his expectations, after all he had been promoted to the U18 team in less than a month of joining the club, while there were players in the U15 team who weren't even sure of their promotion despite playing for so long. Congratulations Hiro, Hidetaka and Yugo congratulated Hiro while he was making his way towards Shun. Thank you, while nodding his head and thanking them with a smile on his face, Hiro continued to walk towards his seat. Along the way, he heard congratulatory words from many players. With no change in their facial expressions, Shun, Yuya and Shunta all three of them were acting as if nothing had happened. Good morning guys, Hiro greeted them and tried to start a conversation. However they still didn't reply anything. What's wrong with them? He thought while taking his seat, silently. For a while they spoke nothing. However just as the bus started to move, Shun punched him lightly on his arm. You cheeky bastard, you didn't even tell me about your promotion. Shun spoke sounding somewhat angry. It happened so fast that I couldn't get the time to tell you. Spoke Hiro in an apologetic tone while rubbing the part of his hand where he got hit by Shun. We literally live in the same room you bastard. Replied Shun while pouting. Ah right, sorry, sorry, I just forgot to tell you. Apologized Hiro after hearing Shun's reply. It's alright you bastard, I don't want to hear your apology. After all it's only a matter of time. From next season onwards I'll be playing with the U18 as well. Replied Shun with a smile on his face. Ah right. Congratulations for your promotion, Shun added while patting Hiro on his back. 
At that same time Shunta who was in front of him, stood from his seat and turned towards him. And as Shunta faced Hiro, his face lit up. Shunta then opened his mouth, congratulations Hiro. Thank you guys, replied Hiro with a smile on his face. And as they finished congratulating him, they then started to ask him about his training experience with the U18 team. Did you get to play against Naoto Miyashiro? How was he? Was he better than me? Asked Shun while looking him in the eye. Shun was really curious about who was better, he or Naoto. Even though the answer was quite obvious, he was still comparing himself to the fourth choice goalkeeper of a professional team. Yeah, I have also seen him play against the pro teams. And despite being so young, he never looked intimidated. I still remember his performance against Vissel Kobe. And damn in that game he conceded only a single goal. And that goal was against Iniesta as well. Can you believe that he had already played against world-class talents? His brows raised and his tone sharpened, Shunta mumbled with a excited look on his face. He, just as Hiro was about to speak, Yuya interrupted him with his own opinions. Yeah, that goal was a banger. Although we lost the game 1-0. But in that game Naoto played really well despite being 17 years old at that time. Yuya intoned, seeing them talking non-stop, Hiro kept his mouth shut. Without uttering a single word, he kept on looking at them while listening to their chatters. Not that he didn't want to speak anything, but they simply didn't give him any opportunity to present his opinions. Despite asking him question first, for entire bus ride, those three kept on talking, giving Hiro no chance to speak. And only after the bus stopped in front of their school, did they realize that. They couldn't hear anything about the U18 team. Seems like we talked way too much. Spoke Yuya while scratching his scalp. Yeah, we didn't even get to hear about the U18 team. Added Shunta. Don't look at me now. It was all you guys who kept on talking without a break. Sometimes I wonder if you guys will grow up to be like those gossiping aunties of the neighborhood. Saying such Hiro rose from his seat while grabbing his bag. Listening to Hiro they looked at each other. Images of them dressed like aunties flashed before their eyes as they looked at each other. Shaking their head vigorously, they then looked at Hiro with a rather irritated look on their face. But Hiro was nowhere to be seen. Oi wait you cheeky bastard. Saying such in an irritated tone, they then rose from their seat and chased Hiro who was already at the door of the bus. Getting off from the bus, they then headed towards their class. While walking to his classroom, he kept wandering his eyes, searching for Masao. But he was nowhere to be seen. Thinking that he was inside the classroom, Hiro then entered the classroom. While entering the classroom he looked at Masao's seat. However the seat was completely vacant. He kept on wandering his gazes all over the classroom. However he was still nowhere to be seen. Good morning hero. You're here hero. How was your holiday? The girls in his classroom quickly surrounded him as he entered the classroom. He tried to ignore them as much as he could. However they still continued to flock over him like swarms of mosquitoes gathered around a sweaty person. Since he couldn't avoid them, he tried to put up with them until the start of the class while maintaining a smile on his face. The teacher's coming, shouted Rin while entering the classroom. Finally as Rin entered the classroom and lied to them about the arrival of the teacher, they dispersed. You've yet to repay me for my previous helps. And now you owe me even more. Giggled Rin as he placed his bag and took his seat. Chapter 107 Glimpse of Masao's Past Since he still had that mission, help Masao regain back his confidence, pending, Hiro couldn't help but wonder about the reason behind the absence of Masao. Curious about Masao's absence, Hiro then asked Rin about Masao. Do you know anything about Masao? Asked Hiro while turning his gaze towards Masao's empty seat. As if Masao was an invisible person, almost nobody in his class cared even a little about his absence. In the back seat, Masato and his gangs were acting as if nothing had happened. Chatting and joking, they all had big wide smile on their faces. I don't know much but I'm sure Masato and his gangs knows about it. Spoke Rin while striking his chin. I heard that fox face Kitsu talking about Masao in the restroom about few days ago. Continued Rin while looking at one of the guy in the back. But they'll probably ignore us if we ask them. Spoke Hiro sounding somewhat disappointed. Ah right, I heard that there are also other students from Himawari Elementary School in our school. If you're that curious then we can ask them as well. But why are you so curious about him? Continued Rin. So he studied in Himawari Elementary School. Thought Hiro after hearing the name of the school which Masao studied before. Since he's our classmate, we should at least try to find out the reason behind his absence. Don't you think so? Spoke Hiro sounding somewhat concerned about Masao. 
His eyes sparkling and his voice sounding excited, Rin spoke while staring at Hiro, I never knew that you were this considerate Hiro. Although I am concerned about him, but I'm simply asking about him because of the mission, thought Hiro while trying to avoid locking eyes with Rin. Talking, such, they continued their conversation until the start of the class. And only when the homeroom teacher entered the classroom, they stopped their conversation. During the lunch break, Hiro and Rin went to other sections to talk to the students who were familiar with Masao's past. Although Shun and the other guys did come to his class to fetch him, he declined their invitation to find out about Masao that day. Since he couldn't stay at the school after the end of the school and had to head to the hostel right after the school, lunch break was the only free time he got during his time at the school. Is there anyone from this class who studied in Himawari Elementary School? Shouted Rin while standing at the door of the class 7D. A fair-skinned meek-looking guy with glasses, rose his hands above his head, meekly. Perfect. Rin spoke to himself and waved his hands while gesturing Hiro who was waiting outside the classroom, to enter the classroom with him. Since a lot of students in the classroom had gone outside to eat their lunches, there weren't much students in the classroom at that moment. Isn't he that guy who plays football really well? Yeah, he's that same guy who plays football with the seniors. Looking up close he indeed looks damn handsome. I heard that even Minami the school goddess is chasing him. The students in class 7D started to gossip as he entered the classroom. Since all of the girls in that classroom had gone to the football ground to watch him play football, only some boys were present at the classroom at that moment. Can we talk for a while? Questioned Rin after walking close to the guy with the glasses. The guy with the glasses nodded his head. Rin then shook his head around to see if anyone was spying on him. He then cautiously leaned closer to the guy with the glasses and whispered in his ear, You said that you studied at Himawari Elementary School. So do you happen to know anything about Masao? Masao Kurimoto, the chubby guy. Listening to Rin's questions, the guy hesitated to answer anything. Noticing the hesitancy of the guy with the glasses, Hiro couldn't hold back himself. Thus he then while frowning his brows, asked the guy with the glasses, look where his friends. And he hasn't come to school for almost about a week now. So we're only worried about him. Noticing Hiro's expression, the guy then finally opened his mouth, even back then, Masao used to be introverted. He was often ignored by other students in the class because of his body language and shyness. And even back then in school he was often bullied by the students in the class. But why was he getting bullied? Interrupted Hiro. Hearing Hiro's questions, the guy with the glasses frowned his brows. His face darkened as beads of sweat started forming over his forehead. Seeing the expression of the guy in front, Hiro could tell that the guy was somehow involved. But still he didn't put pressure on him to reveal the reason. It's alright if you're not comfortable with sharing the reason with us. Hiro tried to reassure the guy. Gnashing his teeth, the guy with the glasses then squeezed some words out of his mouth, no. I must confess, although he was fat, he used to be a gentle kid. Unlike some of us, he didn't study with us from the beginning. During our third year at the school, he transferred to our school from some other school. And before he transferred to our school, I was the one who used to get bullied because of my glasses, appearance and skinny body. Even though I did nothing wrong to anyone, the strong kids in my school often bullied me because of my attire and appearance. Unlike most kids of my school, I come from a poor family. And because of that I couldn't afford fancy school, accessories like the rest of them. And due to that reason I was always left out. The students in the class often mocked me for carrying same school bag, wearing the same worn out shoes and untidy uniform. At first I only got mocked. However once when I couldn't take it any more of their mocking behavior anymore, I stood up to them. But I was too powerless to fight against those strong kids. They beat me up real bad. Hearing his story, Hiro and Rin, both of them gritted their teeth and clenched their fist. Rage bubbling within them boiled like burning tar. Still Hiro continued to listen to his story without interrupting him. Even though they had approached him to inquire about Masao, they just couldn't ignore another person who had suffered through a lot. Since Hiro himself had gone through such painful experience once in his previous life. The mocking comments made by others, the mocking gazes he felt after losing his abilities, he could never forget those experiences. Although Hiro was holding back himself, the same couldn't be said to Rin. Unable to control his anger any further, he burst out, why didn't you complain to the teacher or your parents? Naive as he was, he blurted out the most practical thing one would do in that kind of situation. I complained about the bullying to our teachers. But since we all were kids, they only gave them warning. 
After that the bullying got even more severe. Everybody I went home with a swollen face. But despite that I didn't want to worry my parents. So I always made excuses and lied to them about my injuries. But how long could I lie? They eventually saw through my lies and went to school to complain about my injuries. However, do you know what they did after receiving the complaints from my parents? They threatened us instead. Since I was studying on scholarship, they threatened us that they'd cancel my scholarship if we reveal about the bullying to other people. And they said that they'll also sue us for damaging their reputation. Since they could afford a lawyer and we couldn't, our loss was inevitable. So we dropped the complaints. Although after the complaints, I didn't get beat up like I used to. I was still bullied by Masato and other kids. And around in the middle of the year, Masao transferred to our school. For some months, he couldn't interact well with other people in our class. And I maintained my distance with him. But despite that he stood up for me when I was getting bullied by Masato and others. And that was the biggest mistake he did. After saying such, his voice started to shake all of a sudden. His eyes filled with guilt, he struggled to speak. And after that they changed their targets. And they started to bully him instead, right? Questioned Hiro while looking at him. The guy with the glasses only nodded his head without uttering anything. He helped you. Then why didn't you help him? Exasperated Rin. I couldn't. I know I was being selfish. But somewhere in my mind, I was glad that I could finally get rid of them. Shuddered the guy with the glasses. Chapter 108 Psychopath. The guy with the glasses continued to share his painful past with the two of them. And hearing his painful experience made them pity him. However just as he mentioned about his selfishness, Rin couldn't hold him back. His sympathy quickly turned into rage. Thud, slamming his hands on the table in front, Rin rose from his seat and exasperated, how could you do that to the person who helped you when you needed the help? Rin's sudden meltdown startled everyone in the classroom. Are they bullying Shitaro? Noticing Rin's face full of anger, the other boys present in the classroom started to gossip about him and Hiro. Although Hiro too was startled by Rin's sudden meltdown, Hiro quickly regained his composure. Shitaro's body shivering and his face pale, he struggled to form any words. Upon noticing Shitaro's face filled with horror, Hiro grabbed Rin's arm and pulled him down. Whispering softly, Hiro asked him to take his seat, calm down Rin. Look you've scared him, and as Rin took his seat, Hiro then apologized to everyone for causing such a ruckus, sorry everyone. We're just talking about something. However seeing Shitaro's pale face, they simply couldn't bring themselves to believe Hiro's words. And hence they continued their gossips. Hearing their gossips, Hiro could pretty much predict that those students in the classroom would later spread some bad rumors about him and Rin by the end of lunch break, if he didn't clear their doubts and confusion at that moment. Quick, apologize to him, mumbled Hiro meekly while maintaining a smile on his face. Why should I? Still angry about Shitaro's selfishness, Rin hesitated to apologize to him. Look around you, you fool, mumbled Hiro. Rin then took a peek around himself. And just by looking at everyone's faces, Rin could tell that they were speaking ill of him and Hiro. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get angry at you, apologized Rin after noticing the gaze of other students present in the classroom. See we're not bullying him, we were just talking about some stuffs, spoke Hiro awkwardly and tried to clear their misunderstandings. To help clear their ill image, Hiro then politely questioned Shitaro, are we bullying you? Shitaro meekly shook his head. See we're not bullying him. Spoke Rin with an awkward smile on his face. However some students still didn't buy their words and kept on gossiping. Just then Shitaro, the guy with the glasses, opened his mouth, I was afraid that if I try to defend him, they'll once again turn their attention towards me. And I was just too afraid of facing that same experience once again. And I was also just too powerless to stand up to them. I know it all sounds as excuses. But it's the truth. Shitaro still couldn't bring himself to look them in the eyes. And by that time his chin had almost shrunk into his chest. Remembering his painful past, Hiro then tried to cheer him up. You haven't done anything wrong. You're just scared. And it's completely natural to be scared when facing danger. So you don't need to feel guilty. Even after hearing such words from Hiro, Rin was still not satisfied with such reasons. Unsatisfied with such vague reasons, he was about to utter something totally immature. But before he could open his mouth, underneath the table, Hiro grabbed his hands and stopped him from speaking anything further. Thank you for saying such. Spoke Shitaro meekly, feeling slightly better. It's alright, but was that all what happened to Masao? Continued Rin in a polite manner. I don't know much. 
since I got placed in another section after that semester. But I heard that he was involved in a serious accident. Mumbled Shitaro. What kind of accident? Asked Rin out of sheer curiosity. K. Ashihashi, the guy who transferred to our school in the fifth year. Just after joining our school, I heard that he and Masao became best friends. I heard that he also defended Masao and protected him. And I could tell just by looking that after Kaya's arrival, Masao was freed from bullying. Kaya being a really good footballer probably also encouraged Masao to play football. And that's how Masao even started to play football during his fifth year of elementary school. However, in that same year, something terrible happened to Kaya. While speaking such, Shitaro then stopped all of a sudden. With his face turning pale, he then struggled to speak anything. Curious. About Kaya, Rin questioned, what happened to him? He. Was. Murdered. Shitaro shuddered. As Shitaro mentioned about murder, the ambience around them got silent all of a sudden. Murdered. Mumbled Rin with his eyes wide open and mouth agape. Hiro who was sitting just beside Rin kept his poker face and didn't show any changes in his facial expression. Yeah, although the teachers and other staff members tried to control the spread of the information as much as they could. The news regarding Kaya's murder was still spread all over the school. Although because of the teacher's efforts the news didn't become a big issue. And eventually a lot of students even forgot about that incident. But I still don't get it. How was Masao involved in that incident? Interrupted Rin. Masao was with Kaya when Kaya was murdered. The incident happened in an abandoned alleyway. I heard that they had agreed to meet each other after school to play some football and because of that Kaya was waiting for Masao in the alleyway during the evening time. Unfortunately a psychopath serial killer was also roaming around that area at that time. And I heard that Masao was there when the killer was stabbing Kaya. Although I'm not sure if that's what happened. But I heard that when the killer was just about to finish his killing by chopping Kaya's fingers, Masao arrived at the scene. And as soon as he saw Kaya's body covered with wounds and bloods, Masao started to scream. Hearing Masao's painful scream, the people living down in the alleyway quickly hurried towards them. And that alerted the killer. So he had to escape in a hurry. However because of that rush, he forgot to carry his weapon and bag. And thus he couldn't completely erase the evidence. Because of the killer's carelessness, he got caught later. And only after he was caught, it was known that the killer was a 38-year-old salaryman. Neatly dressed in office uniform, one could hardly tell that he was such a ruthless killer. From his house the police confiscated 17 finger of kids of different age positioned in some kind of weirdly drawn magic circle. As if he was some kind of cultist, his house was filled with books related to magic and weirdly drawn circles with human fingers. That psychopath had killed 18 people including Kaya and he was obsessed with fingers. Mentioning everything which he knew about the incident, Shitaro then stopped talking to catch a moment of breather. As Shitaro mentioned about the deeds of the psychopath a shiver ran down Hiro's spine. Damn, he had to go through such terrible experience as a kid. Mumbled Hiro feeling concerned about Masao after hearing about the incident. Indeed, he didn't even attend school for almost about a month after that incident. And Masato and the other bullies made it even worse. They took their bullying even further by mentioning about the incident. They even started to joke about incident. While speaking such, Shitaro then clenched his fist. His face started to turn red as he arched his brows and gnashed his teeth. He then while gritting his teeth, squeezed some words out of his mouth, I wish. Instead of, Kaya, it should, have, been, them. Just by looking at Shitaro's face and listening to Shitaro's words, Hiro could tell just how much Shitaro loathed those bullies. Rin who was sitting beside him had almost the same reaction as that of Shitaro. He too was angry about the behavior of those bullies. It's totally natural for you to feel such way towards those bullies. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel that way either. But if you say such, then will there be any difference between you and them? Questioned Hiro while trying to reassure Shitaro. Since Hiro believed that hatred will only sprout further hatred, Hiro wanted to free Shitaro from the shackles of hatred and revenge. How could you be so calm even after hearing about such evil deeds Hiro? Intoned Rin with somewhat irritated face. I'm angry and my blood's boiling as well Rin. And I won't deny that their deeds were wrong. But Rin remember, hatred will turn into revenge. And that revenge will further breed misfortunes. Spoke Hiro. Then nobody should punish them for such deeds. Exasperated Rin. They should be punished. No, they must be punished. Either by God or by someone else. Mumbled Hiro while looking Rin in the eyes. But you should probably apologize to Masao and move on. You've got your future ahead. You need to think of your parents. They've sacrificed a lot for you. 
So don't waste your time and disturb your mind with thoughts of those bullies. Continued Hiro while turning his gaze towards Shitaro. Chapter 109 Taste of Their Own Medicine. Ding, dong. Finally just as Hiro was about to finish his words, the school bell rang and the lunch break came to an end. Rising from their seats, just as Rin and Hiro were about to head out, Hiro paused all of a sudden. Looking back at Shitaro's face which displayed a mixed emotions of anger, sadness, guilt and repentance, Hiro spoke, the past has already passed, so don't traumatize yourself with those thoughts of past. Just apologize to Masao and move on because what you did that time was wrong as well. Those bullies will get punished sooner or later. So just focus on your life in the present and move ahead. Speaking such, Hiro then left the classroom. Hearing such words, Shitaro's eyes moistened. Although he couldn't let go of his hatred that easily, still he felt somewhat relieved after revealing the things he had built up inside his heart. As if he had just dropped a heavy weight which he had been carrying for several years, he felt as light as feather after revealing the things which he had been hiding inside his heart for several years. Droplets of tears rolled down his eyes and fell on the table in front. But before anybody could notice his teary eyes, he quickly wiped off the tears from his eyes. Standing in front of the lectern, Haruki Sensei, the history teacher was teaching about First World War to the students present in the classroom. Most of the students present in the classroom were ardently listening to his lectures while keeping their gazes fixated at the textbook. Hiro himself was doing the same as others. However unlike others, only his gaze was fixated at the book. His consciousness was wandering elsewhere. What can I do to make those guys realize their mistakes? It's not like I can beat them up. Although I can do that as well. But I'm not sure that I can take on that many kids by myself. Since I haven't trained myself in any marital arts. But I doubt that they'd realize their mistakes just by getting beaten. So what should I really do? Thought Hiro while staring at his textbook. Unable to handle the axics by themselves, the Allies then negotiated USA to help them turn the tides of the war. Spoke Haruki. Although he was pondering about something else, that particular sentence from Haruki Sensei caught his attention. With the sides of his lips curling, Hiro then suddenly thought of an idea, yeah. That's right, I just need to make them taste the taste of their own medicine. One after the other several teachers came and left the classroom. Having developed an unique talent of avoiding teachers' gazes by acting as if he was paying attention to the lectures, Hiro avoided getting scolded by the teachers despite not paying any attention to the lectures. Ding, dong, and as the sound of the school bell chimed in, the lectures finally came to an end. As usual, the girls in his classroom began to flock over him. Despite rejecting them countless times, those girls of his classroom never stopped asking him for his social media accounts. They were as persistent as mosquitoes. Since he couldn't use his mobile phones in the hostel except during his free time on weekends, to get rid of them once and for all, he decided to give them his Facebook account. Fine, I'll provide my Facebook account. But let me tell you I don't use my account much since I can't use my phone. But even after that if you guys want my account, I'm willing to provide you all with my account. Hiro mumbled. The girls who were flocking all over him nodded their head. Sigh. Seeing them nodding their head, Hiro heaved a deep sigh. After that he wrote his Facebook account on a piece of paper and handed it to the girls in front. Carrying his backpack, he then left the classroom. Pouting his face, Rin was waiting for him outside the classroom. Noticing Rin's expression, Hiro then casually questioned Rin, what's wrong with your face? You traitor, how could you give them your social media account when you haven't even given it to me? Intoned Rin in somewhat irritated tone. If I didn't give it to them then I wouldn't have been able to squeeze my way out from them. Spoke Hiro casually. Also the account which I've given them, I don't use it much. Plus in hostel we can't even use mobile phones anyway. Except during free time and weekends. Continued Hiro. Hiro then lightly patted Rin on his back and spoke. I'm thinking of making a new Instagram account to chat with my friends and family. So when I open that account, I'll add you. For now let's go. Saying such hero then walked away before anybody else from the classroom could catch up to him. He didn't want to waste any more time with them, since from that day onwards he'll have to stay overtime for extra training. Upon hearing such words coming out from mouth of hero, Rin's face brightened up and a smile formed on his face. Just like a golden sun coming out from behind the black clouds after a heavy rain, Rin's gloomy face brightened. Wait for me, shouting such, he hurriedly rushed towards Hiro. While walking out of the main building, Hiro and Rin met Shitaro along the way. At first he was thinking of fleeing away. But he still hadn't thanked Hiro and Rin for listening to the things which he had been hiding within him. 
Thus, instead of fleeing away he then approached Hiro. While bowing his head, he then genuinely thanked Hiro, thank you very much for listening to my story. I'll head to Masao's home and apologize to him. Also my name is Shitaro. It's alright Shitaro, you don't have to thank us. Because of his humble nature, Hiro didn't want Shitaro to thank him. No, please let me express my gratitude. After all only because of you too, I can finally get rid of those thoughts built up inside me. It had been gnawing me from inside from a long time. So please let me thank you. While still bowing his head, Shitaro mumbled. Chapter 110 Karma Upon noticing the scene of Shitaro bowing in front of Hiro and Rin, students who were passing by them misunderstood the whole scene happening at that moment. Trying to avoid them, some students even impetuously ran away as they witnessed the scene of Shitaro bowing in front of Hiro and Rin. Analyzing their facial expressions and body language, Hiro could tell exactly what they were thinking, are they bullying that meek-looking four-eyed guy? It's my pleasure to help you. But you should raise your head now. Or else some people will think I'm some kind of bully. Hastily appreciating Shitaro's gratitude, Hiro tried to lift Shitaro's head up. Yeah, you'll make us look like bullies. Instead, added Rin with an awkward smile on his face. Sorry about that, that was not my attention. Apologizing to Hiro and Rin, Shitaro again tried to bow his head. However Hiro quickly caught him and stopped him from lowering his head furthermore. Why do you always bow your head? Please don't do that again. Requested Hiro sounding somewhat helpless. And before you bow your head again, I'm telling you, don't do it. Hiro continued, after that the three of them started to head out of the main building while conversing with each other. Alright, you told us that you weren't friends with Masao. So how will you reach him? Like do you even know the way to his house? Curiously questioned Hiro while walking towards the main gate. Well although I wasn't friends with him, I do know where he lives. In the past I wanted to thank him countless times for standing up for me. So I often followed him to thank him. And sometimes I even followed him to his home. But I could never muster my courage. Shitaro mumbled meekly. Hearing Shitaro's sentence, a shiver ran down Rin's spine. While frowning his brows, Rin then joked, Damn, are you some kind of stalker? Obviously not. Shitaro intoned with a flustered face. Chill dude, I'm only joking. Rin replied, Okay guys this is where we part. Mumbled Hiro while pointing at the bus in front of the main gate. It was nice meeting you Shitaro. Although we're not from the same class, if you want to hang out with us, you can come to the football ground. Maybe we can play some football together. Saying such Hiro then rushed towards the bus parked in front of the main gate. Because of the earlier incident with the girls in his classroom and Shitaro, that day he was the last one to board the bus. Shun, Yuya, Shunta and others had already boarded the bus. And the bus was only waiting for his arrival. Quickly taking a seat beside Shun, Hiro avoided the confrontation with the driver. And just as he boarded the bus, the driver asked, has everyone boarded the bus? The players in the bus replied in unison, yes sir. The bus then started moving. Asterisk 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 asterisk. To implement his earlier idea, Hiro required the help of Shun and several other players from the club. Especially Shun, since he was the most friendly guy out of all his friends and his friend circle was big compared to others. Shun, do you have any tough friends? Casually asked Hiro. Tough, what do you mean by tough? Asked Shun with a dumbfounded look on his face. Like someone who looks strong or someone who knows how to fight. I do know few guys who are learning karate, judo and kendo. But why do you want to know about them? Shun questioned with a confused look on his face. And all of sudden he abruptly turned his head towards Hiro. Did you get into a fight? Shun inquired with a flustered face. Ah oh no, you know how much I hate fighting. So why would I fight with others? Hiro replied calmly while trying to reassure Shun that he was worrying over nothing. Leaning his back against the seat, Shun heaved a sigh of relief, sigh. Then why are you asking such questions? Asked Shun. Well I learned few things about Masao today during lunch time. So I wanted to help him. What kind of things? Curiously questioned Shun. Hiro then revealed him about the past experiences of Masao and Shitaro. From the start to finish, without missing a single point, he revealed everything. Yuya and Shunta who were just in front of them silently joined in on the conversation. Without speaking anything, they kept on listening Hiro's elaboration. So I wanted to teach those bullies a lesson. And for that I've got a perfect plan in my head. But to implement that plan, I'll need your help. Finally after elaborating everything, Hiro finished his sentence. 
I see, murmured Shun, I'll definitely help you, but are you going to beat them up? If you're thinking of doing such then I'd have to decline, continued Shun with a serious look on his face. No, no, don't worry about it, I'm not going to involve myself in any way. Hiro replied, if so then I can introduce you to some of my friends. Although I'm not sure what you're going to do, but I trust you Hiro, so don't break my trust. Finally after hearing Hiro's response, Shun agreed to help him. Don't worry, I won't, nodded Hiro with a grin on his face. Although I believe that violence shouldn't be used to educate someone, but to teach those bastards some lesson, a little violence is needed. So I'm sorry my friend, Hiro mumbled to himself. Even though Shun wasn't asking him about his intentions, Yuya and Shunta both of them were extremely curious about his plan. With his eyes gleaming with curiosity, Yuya was as curious as a fish. Unable to wait, he eagerly inquired Hiro right away, Hiro. How will you punish them? Yeah will you threaten them? Shunta joined, however Hiro refused to reveal his plans. Although his plan was quite simple, he still refused to reveal his intentions. He was simply going to make use of the power of those strong guys to educate Masato and his gangs. Just like how they behaved with Masao, he was going to make them taste the feeling of getting beaten, threatened and mocked for no reason. As there's a saying, karma is a bitch. Hiro was going to make them believe in karma. He was going to show them that karma is actually a bitch. Yuya and Shunta kept on complaining all along the way because of Hiro's unresponsiveness. However Hiro still kept his lips tightly sealed. Although he got help from Shun, he wasn't still done. He also asked help from the players of U18 team as well. Chapter 111 Seeking Help After the end of the evening training, Hiro approached Tatsuki and few other guys of U18 team who were friendly towards him to seek for their help. And surprisingly Tatsuki Siko and Naoto Miyashiro agreed with his request. However they weren't willing to do him that favor for free. As they say that nothing's actually free in this materialistic world. Both of them had their own demands for doing him that favor. I'll introduce you to a delinquent friend of mine from my class who's also training to become a MMA fighter. Spoke Tatsuki, you're friends with delinquents, intoned Hiro with his eyes wide open. Hiro was surprised to hear that Tatsuki, a footballer was friends with delinquent. Well technically he's not, since he just attained that title because he beat some delinquents who came to fight with him for absolutely no reason. Oh how I pity that guy. Tatsuki mumbled while making a pitiful face. Then again, his facial expression quickly changed. With the sides of his lips curling, Tatsuki then made his demand for helping him, I'll introduce you to him. But you need to convince the coaches to include me in the extra training that you'll be receiving. Just as Hiro heard about extra training, his eyes opened wide. Slightly frowning his brows, Hiro then asked, how did you know about the extra training? Since he hadn't told anyone about the extra training which he was going to receive from the two coaches, Hiro was pretty shocked to find that Tatsuki knew about the extra training. Hearing Hiro's questions, Tatsuki pretended as if he was trying to remember from where he heard about the extra training, while scratching his chin. And after few seconds of acting, he lowered his head and whispered in an intimidating manner, the walls have ears too. Suddenly a shiver ran down Hiro's spine as he heard Tatsuki's response. Seeing. His scared expression, Naoto who was standing beside him spoke while lightly hitting Tatsuki on his back, now don't scare him any further. With a dumbfounded look on his face, Hiro began to wonder about the meaning behind Naoto's words. Don't take his joke seriously, he's only playing prank on you. It was manager Makoto who informed us about your extra training, although he didn't inform about it to every player in the team. To ease our worries, he informed some of the core players in the team about your training so that we don't have to worry about your performance in coming Premier League. Saying such, Naoto tried to clear his doubts. Tatsuki who was standing right in front of him burst into laughter and began to apologize while smiling, sorry. Sorry, I shouldn't have scared you. Ha ha ha, as serious as Tatsuki looked, he was also a prankster from within. But why would you need me to convince the coaches, if you already know about the extra training? questioned Hiro after regaining his composure. Well I already tried my luck, but they wouldn't let me join the training session because it was individually designed for you. Tatsuki replied while frowning his brows. Acting just like a child who was denied of his, her favorite toy, Tatsuki looked kinda depressed. Just how much are you obsessed with training, you muscle freak? Thought Hiro after listening to Tatsuki's plea. While most players avoided extra training, Tatsuki was a rare fellow who was very fond of extra training. 
Even in the morning and evening training sessions, he was among those few fellows who never complained about the intensity of the training. I'll talk to the coaches about it, and I'll try me best to convince them, but it'll be entirely up to them whether to accept or reject you. Replied Hiro in a calm manner. Just by hearing that much, Tatsuki's face lit up. With his eyes sparkling he then spoke in a cheerful tone, I knew that I could depend on you. Just why is he this happy to train more? Thought Hiro while contorting his face. Although from outside he maintained his smile and continued to act as if he was happy for him. While turning his gaze towards Naoto, he then asked Naoto about his condition for helping him, then what about you senior Naoto? What kind of condition do I have to fulfill to get your support? Well nothing much, I just want to block some of your shots daily. I believe that by training with you, I can improve my reflexes. Naoto presented his condition. Hearing Naoto's condition Hiro nodded his head and agreed to his request right away. Unlike Tatsuki's request, Naoto's was way simpler. Then I'll introduce you to a friend of mine who happens to be an amateur boxer. Although he'll not beat anyone outside the ring, you can use his looks and aura. He looks pretty intimidating even to me. So I believe he can be of help to solve your problem. Since Hiro couldn't directly ask their help for no reason and he couldn't even tell them about his plans, Hiro had lied to them that some kids in his school were troubling him. And Naoto and Tatsuki who believed his lies were only helping him because of that reason as well. Thank you senior Naoto. With a smile on his face, Hiro bowed his head to thank the two seniors who were going to help him. Thank you senior Tatsuki. After thanking both of them for agreeing to help him, Hiro rushed towards manager Makoto to start his extra training which was going to take place in gym that day. As he was running towards manager Makoto, Hiro began to wonder about few things. Although I did hear about Naoto and Kazuya in my past life, I wonder why I never heard about Tatsuki. Naoto and Kazuya although didn't perform as per the expectations placed upon them, they were still decent players, and I believe when I was 22, I heard about Kazuya when he was playing for Kyoto Sanga. And if I'm not wrong Naoto used to play for Urawa Reds as an second choice goalkeeper. Just what happened to them, for them to degrade so much? Chapter 112 Gym Since most of the players from the U18 team of Kawasaki Frontale were only decent players within Japan in his previous life, he couldn't recall every single one of them. However seeing Tatsuki's performance on the field and his eagerness to train, it made him wonder why he never heard the name of such a dedicated player in his previous life. Tatsuki Siko Tatsuki Siko, Tatsuki, did I forget about him? Or did he encounter some kind of injuries like I did? Wondered Hiro while trying to remember about a player named Tatsuki from Kawasaki Frontale. Since he didn't pay much attention to J-League in his previous life, he wasn't much knowledgeable about the players from the J-League. And he only remembered the names of few of the extraordinary players from his previous life. Well the way he overtrains himself, he must have injured himself in his previous life. Murmured Hiro before joining manager Makoto. Dressed in a comfortable black-colored tracksuit, manager Makoto was discussing the results of the training with the positioning coach Kensuke Kimura. Maybe we should train Kazuya to play more defensively, suggested coach Kensuke, but I believe he'll shine more while playing as an anchor instead. Replied manager Makoto, and just as Makoto was about to point at his notebook, he noticed Hiro. Oh, you're here, mumbled Makoto while looking at him. He then turned his gaze towards Coach Kensuke and spoke, let's continue our discussion later in my cabin. Hearing manager Makoto's proposal, Coach Kensuke nodded his head. And before he left their sight, he looked at Hiro and spoke, you're doing really great. So train well under the guidance of two coaches. Hiro nodded his head and replied, thank you for your praises sir. Then I'll see you later in the cabin. Speaking such, Coach Kensuke walked away. Now then, let's head to the gym. Manager Makoto exclaimed, with Manager Makoto leading the way, he headed towards the gym together with Manager Makoto. From behind him Tatsuki was gesturing him to talk to Manager Makoto about including him in the extra training. Hiro was planning to vouch for him during the training but after noticing his enthusiasm, he decided to talk to the coach right away. Um, sir, mumbled Hiro, yes Hiro, sir I was thinking of making a proposal. What kind of proposal? I was wondering if Tatsuki Senpei could join me in the extra training. Like with a rival, the training would be even more effective. Don't you think so sir? Mumbled Hiro with a slight hesitation. The moment Hiro mentioned about Tatsuki, Makoto could guess that Tatsuki had asked him to vouch for him. But even so he couldn't deny the fact that having a rival would further increase the effectiveness of the training. 
Thus, he stopped midway and turned around. Waving his hands at Tatsuki, he gestured him to come towards him. With a big wide grin in his face, Tatsuki quickly ran towards manager Makoto after noticing his hand gestures. While panting heavily as he arrived before manager Makoto, Tatsuki spoke excitedly, Yes sir. Ahem, clearing his throat, manager Makoto spoke while pointing at Hiro, Do you want to train with him? Without any delay, Tatsuki gave his answer right away, Yes sir. Good, then follow me. Saying such, manager Makoto began to lead them towards the gym. With the sky dyed in red and orange hues, the ambience around them was starting to get chilly as the sun was on the verge of setting down. The grassy green field at that moment was painted in golden colors. Silhouette of the players, floodlights, stands and mesh fences were all over the pitch. As manager Makoto unlocked the gym, he signaled the two of them to head inside. Obeying his commands, both of them entered the gym. Partially dark, Hiro's eyes struggled to adapt to the darkness. Since it was already getting dark outside, the light coming from behind him and the window were barely enough to light up the whole room. Walking inside the gym, Hiro felt as if he had entered some kind of dark cave. Wait for a while, I'll turn on the switch. Mumbling such, Tatsuki walked towards the switchboard which was just beside the main door. Click, 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 and just as he turned on the lights, the bright light coming from the LED light bulbs illuminated the whole place, bright. Treadmills, dumbbells, exercise balls, ropes and many more gym equipments were placed in an organized manner inside that huge spacious gym room. Painted in black, blue, red and white, the gym was finely decorated. Witnessing that well-organized and finely decorated gym room, Hiro couldn't help but compare it to the gyms he had seen in his previous life. You should probably close your mouth or else a fly will enter inside your mouth. Joked Tatsuki after seeing Hiro's expression. With his eyes gleaming and mouth agape, Hiro was staring at the gym room. Quickly closing his mouth, Hiro then walked further inside. Almost every equipment in that room was still as good as new. Welcome to the gym room of Kawasaki Frontale's youth facility. Equipped with advanced gym equipment, it's even par with the gym of the senior team. Manager Makoto announced with a sense of pride. Indeed I can tell you since I've been to the senior team's gym. It is indeed par with the senior team's gym. Although it's lacking a swimming pool. Joked manager Nozomi while entering the gym room. Noticing manager Nozomi, Hiro quickly bowed his head and greeted him, Good evening manager Nozomi. Good evening Hiro. Manager Nozomi greeted him back. But I'm not your manager anymore. Joked manager Nozomi. Oh, it seems that we've got another player with us. Continued Nozomi while looking at Tatsuki. Good evening manager Nozomi. Tatsuki quickly bowed his head and greeted manager Nozomi. You still haven't changed Siko. Your hunger for training is still the same. Mumbled Nozomi in a friendly manner. But you shouldn't overtrain yourself Siko. Although you're talented, you're way too much obsessed with training. Remember rest is part of training as well. I'll keep that in mind sir. Tatsuki replied politely. Then let's start the training. New quest unlocked. Title. Extra training with the coaches. Description. Complete the exercises as per the coach's request. Duration. Until the start of Premier League. Rewards. Silver ticket. Penalty. Deduction of random stat and electrocution. Chapter 113 Diet Food. Just as manager Nozomi finished making the announcement of the commencement of the training, Hiro heard the sound of the notification of the system inside his head. But don't I already have another quest pending? Confused by the sudden notification of the quest, Hiro complained. Not because he was unhappy with the quest but because of the penalty, he was complaining about the quest. Since he couldn't afford to lose any stat, if he wanted to perform well in the Premier League and also the description of the quest was rather vague, he was rather skeptical to accept another quest at that moment. You do, but both of these quests are completely irrelevant with each other. And both are for your own good. So why are you even complaining? Replied the system in somewhat arrogant manner. Well that's true as well. Imperceptibly nodded hero. But why do I feel that you're being mean? You're just imagining things. While he was having conversation with the system, manager Nozomi called his name several times. Hero, Hero. However since he was talking with the system, he couldn't hear anything and thus, he didn't respond anything at all. Unable to hear his response, manager Nozomi then walked closer towards him and nudged him slightly. Feeling the sudden sensation of touch, Hero quickly came back to his senses. Acting somewhat startled, he mumbled, yes sir. Let's begin the training. Saying such, he quickly walked towards manager Makoto as if nothing ever happened. 
Manager Nozomi who was standing beside him was left dumbfounded by his actions. Scratching his scalp with a perplexing look on his face, Nozomi was wondering what just happened in that moment. Taking out two bozu balls and some weights, Manager Makoto then made Hiro and Tatsuki perform weighted bozu ball squats to improve their balance. And while the two of them performed the exercise diligently, Manager Makoto noted their performance in his notebook. After few reps of weighted bozu ball squats, Makoto made them perform some reps of lunges, some reps of burpees, some reps of weight lifting and finally he ended the training with 10 minutes of yoga. By the time, they completed the extra training, the sun had completely settled down and the starry sky was filled with shimmering lights of moon and the stars. At 7.40 in the night, their training finally came to an end. Completely drenched in sweat, steam was oozing out of their exhausted sweaty body. Quite satisfied with their progress, Manager Makoto and Manager Nozomi were looking at the data which they've collected during the training with their lips curled. Huff, huff, panting heavily, Hiro and Tatsuki, both of them were lying on the gym floor, completely exhausted. Their muscles bulging and sore, they were having difficulty in moving their body. How long are you guys planning on sleeping on the floor? Aren't you guys planning on having dinner? Manager Nozomi spoke sarcastically while looking at them. Just one minute more. Tatsuki spoke with great difficulty. At around 8.15, along with Tatsuki he entered the canteen after having a quick shower. Because of the exhaustion from extra training, both of them walked quite slow and stiffly just like a mechanical robot. And that day the coaches had informed the chefs in advance about his extra training and had specially asked them to prepare him his special diet food which consisted of chicken breast, avocado, eggs, salmon, some rice, misp soup and some vegetable salad. Extremely hungry because of the extra training, Hiro's eyes glowed as he witnessed the food prepared for him. Whoa that's a lot of food. And we also have chicken breast. Hiro mumbled in awe, since Hiro was really fond of chicken, he couldn't help but feel excited about the food prepared for him. But why do they look kinda uncooked to me? Noticing the bland color of the chicken breast, Hiro questioned. Yeah, they look kinda uncooked. Tatsuki who was standing right beside him nodded his head seriously. But who cares about the look? Taste is king, plus I'm really hungry right now. I could eat a whole chicken by myself. Mumbled Tatsuki while gulping his saliva. After that both of them headed towards a table and placed their tray full of food atop the table. And as they sat down, both of them thanked God for providing them food to eat. Thank you for the food. Joining their hands into namaste they expressed their gratefulness before eating. Just as Hiro took a bite of the chicken breast, Hiro contorted his face and quickly spat the chunk of chicken breast in his mouth. As unpleasing as the dishes looked, the taste of the food was even worse. With not much spices, the food tasted completely bland. Hiro who was used to eating food which were taste buds pleasing, quite didn't like the taste of the bland dinner specially prepared for him. Sir, I think you forgot to add spices. Complained Hiro after having a bite of the food prepared for him. Tatsuki too spat the food out of his mouth and nodded his head, yes sir. The food's kinda bland, eat what you're getting to eat. The coaches had specially asked me to prepare this dishes for you. So if you have any complaints regarding the food then complain it to the coaches, not me. An old man in his 50s who was dressed in white chef uniform, standing at the counter replied in a harsh tone while making a bitter face. That old man along with few other staff members were responsible for cooking the food for the players residing in the hostel. And unlike other staff members that old man was the only one who resided in the hostel. Don't get angry old man Oniki. We're not complaining about your cooking. I've been eating the food you prepared for more than three years and have I ever complained about your food? In fact I very much enjoy the food you prepare. But can you please add some salt and pepper? Tatsuki tried to calm the old man with his flattering words. Chapter 114 Preparation I Sunday November 11, 2021 With the permission of manager Makoto, Hiro, Tatsuki and Naoto, the three of them left the hostel at around 11 o'clock in the morning to meet the guys mentioned by Tatsuki and Naoto. However they didn't mention the real reason to the coach, instead they had lied to the coach that they'd be visiting the shopping mall to buy some new clothes. And since Hiro was still new to the city, Naoto and Tatsuki were barely accompanying him. Although their reason was partly truth and partly lie. Casually dressed in dark green colored hoodie and blue jeans, Hiro was walking along with Tatsuki who was dressed in dark blue colored plain sweatshirt and beige colored casual pants. Naoto who was dressed in white shirt layered with cream colored cardigan and navy blue casual pants was leading the way. Hurry up guys, manager Makoto has strictly warned us to be back by 3 in the afternoon. 
spoke Naoto while leading the way. After walking for a while, they took a cab to get to the shopping mall. And after about 15 minutes of cab drive, they arrived in front of the shopping mall which they were visiting that day. While Naoto and Tatsuki were managing the cab fare, Hiro was standing in front of the luxurious shopping mall made up of bricks, concrete and glasses. Fountains, flowers, colored lights, LED billboards, the shopping mall was luxuriously decorated. Many people dressed in different kind of fancy dresses were entering and exiting the shopping mall. Some were carrying a lot of shopping bags in their hands while some were simply there to enjoy their time. Why are you acting like it's your first time visiting a shopping mall? While slightly nudging Hiro behind his back, Tatsuki questioned. Well it's actually my first time visiting such a grand shopping mall. Murmured Hiro shyly, since he rarely visited shopping malls and the ones at his hometown weren't as luxurious as the one he was at that moment, Hiro couldn't help himself from staring at the majestic shopping mall in front of his eyes. Then this brother of yours will show you around the shopping mall today. Proudly stating such, Tatsuki gave Hiro a gentle push behind his back. But before we go, let me put on my mask. I'm afraid if I head inside barefaced, my fans will recognize me. Tatsuki mumbled with a sense of pride and took out a black colored mask from his pocket. Since Tatsuki had already debuted for the senior team, he was quite concerned about his image. Although not many of them even remembered his face since he only played 10 minutes, he was still proud about his achievements. As if anybody would even know you. Naoto mumbled meekly in a sarcastic way. While putting on his mask, Tatsuki mumbled, did you say something? Cover your eyes too, what if they recognize you just by looking at your eyes? Naoto replied sarcastically. Tatsuki took Naoto's words seriously and didn't get the sarcasm behind his words. Ah, I forgot to bring my shades. Mumbled Tatsuki while touching his pockets. Leave him be, let's head inside. After that the three of them headed inside the shopping mall. And as they made their way inside, Tatsuki mumbled, just don't be intimidated by am I. Although he looks kinda intimidating, he's really easygoing person. Hiro only slightly nodded his head without replying anything. Inside a coffee shop, a fair-skinned guy with well-defined facial features was sipping coffee while sitting at a table in the corner, all alone. Although his facial features were well-defined, he had accumulated quite a bit of scars all over his face. His knuckles were bruised and a layer of dead skin had covered his knuckles. Walking inside the coffee shop, Tatsuki yelled loudly while waving his hands at the black-haired scar-faced guy, Oi am I. Hearing his loud voice, the Batistas of the coffee shop along with several other people present in the coffee shop all turned their attention towards them. Giving them cold stares while staring at them with their bulging eyes, they all looked pissed by Tatsuki's loud voice. Shish, shish, Naoto tried to silence Tatsuki. Keep your mouth shut, you idiot. At the same time Hiro who was tagging along with them, lowered his head and apologized to the people present in the coffee shop for disturbing them. Tatsuki's behavior embarrassed them quite a bit. And after apologizing to the people present in the coffee shop, the three of them quickly made their way towards the black-haired guy with scars all over his face. You never change do you? Chuckled Amai the black-haired guy. So he's like this even in school. Thought Hiro after hearing Amai's words. The scars in his face and his cold eyes does make him look kinda intimidating. But he's got a warm smile. Thought Hiro while looking at the face of Amai who was conversing cheerfully with Tatsuki and Naoto with a smile on his face. And who's this friend here? Questioned Amai while looking at Hiro. Ah sorry, I forgot to introduce you to him. Tatsuki apologized. This guy's right here is our new teammate, Takahashi Hiro. Tatsuki introduced Hiro. Hello Hiro, I'm Ikuo Amai, friend of Siko. And I'm also friends with Naoto. Amai introduced himself while lowering his head politely. Nice to meet you senior Amai. Greeted Hiro while lowering his head. Senior. Amai blurted out dumbfoundedly after hearing Hiro call him senior. Oh right, I forgot to mention that he's only 12 years old. Ha ha ha, Tatsuki chuckled. What 12 year old? Amai intoned with his eyes wide open in disbelief. Yup, that was the kind of reaction I was expecting. Naoto mumbled casually as if he was expecting that kind of reaction from Amai. Ordering few cups of coffee, Hiro then explained Amai about his plans. Although he didn't mention his real purpose for making him do such things, Hiro thoroughly elaborated his plan to Amai. Since my friend's brother is asking me for help, I won't decline it. However if it were someone else I would have already walked away. But consider yourself lucky, Amai agreed to his request. And after talking for a while, the four of them exited the coffee shop.
I need to head to restroom guys. I'll be back. Saying such Amai separated from them. Although Hiro mentioned everything about his plan to Amai, he still hadn't disclosed everything because of the presence of Naoto and Tatsuki. But just as Amai separated from them, he found a perfect opportunity to disclose his whole plan to him. And hence, he made an excuse to talk to Amai all alone, I also need to use the restroom. Do you want us to come with you? Replied Naoto in a concerned manner. Since Hiro was still new to the shopping mall, they feared that Hiro might not be able to find the restroom on his own. Ah oh no, I'll just follow Amai. Saying such, Hiro declined their offer. Chapter 115 Preparation Complete After declining the help of Tatsuki and Naoto, Hiro began to chase after Amai. Senior Amai wait for me, shouted Hiro while chasing Amai who was heading towards the restroom. Hearing Hiro's voice, Amai paused all of a sudden. Turning back towards Hiro, Amai spoke politely, Oh, are you heading to the restroom as well? Without replying anything, Hiro simply nodded his head. After walking few steps, the two of them arrived at the restroom. With several compartments, the neatly organized modern restroom was quite empty as well and besides the two of them, there weren't any other people present in the restroom at that moment. But even so, Hiro still had absolutely no idea on how to disclose his real intention to Amai without angering him. Either he'd have to speak the truth or else he'll have to make some reasonable excuses to get Amai's help. But either way he'd have to disclose his true purpose to get his help. Hmm, senior Amai have you ever gotten bullied? Asked Hiro meekly while trying to start a conversation with Amai. Well not really. Shaking his head, Amai started to walk towards one of the compartment to finish his business. Although if you can count the abusive training of my coaches as bullying then yes I've been bullied. Spoke Amai sarcastically before entering one of the compartment. Although Hiro really had no actual business to attend in the restroom, he still entered one of the compartment to not make him seem suspicious. However little did he knew, Amai was somewhat suspicious of him from the moment he mentioned about his made-up story to Amai. Were there not any bullies in your school? Asked Hiro while forcing his pee. Well, there were a few of them in my elementary school. And it's the same in the middle school as well. Casually replied Amai while urinating. Although Amai didn't mind Hiro asking about such stuffs while he was peeing, his suspicions towards Hiro was growing even further after hearing Hiro's repeatedly asked questions. But why are you asking me about bullies all of a sudden? If you're worried about the bullies in your school, then I've already told you that I'll help you with it. Mumbled Amai while zipping his pant. But then again, do you really need my help? Like just by observing you, I could tell that you're pretty strong. And since you're already playing professional football despite being only 12 years old, I doubt if anybody would actually dare to bully you. Hearing Amai's response, Hiro went silent all of a sudden. He knew that Amai was getting suspicious of him. After all his whole story sounded extremely ridiculous. Was he suspicious of me all along? Pondered Hiro while staring blankly at the lock of the door of the compartment. Maybe I should tell him the truth. And just as he came out of the compartment, Amai mumbled casually while washing his hands, from the very beginning when you told me about your story, I found it really hard to believe it. And after following me to the restroom, you keep on asking about bullies. Yup, he's suspicious of me, thought Hiro after hearing Amai's words. However Hiro didn't reply anything at all and kept on listening. After turning off the tap, Amai walked towards the hand dryer to dry his hands. And as he finished drying his wet hands, he walked towards Hiro. Squinting his eye and furrowing his brows, he looked extremely serious. Just tell me about your true intention already. Spoke Amai in his deep voice. My patience is running out. Noticing Amai's facial expression, he decided to tell him the truth regardless of the consequences. I'm doing this for a friend of mine. He had been bullied by some bullies. Hiro then elaborated everything he knew about Masao to Amai. Although he didn't mention much about Shitaro, Hiro still told Amai about the generosity of Masao, the tragedy he faced, the bullying he endured. Almost everything which he knew about Masao, Hiro revealed to Amai without mixing any lies, just as it is. So that friend of yours was bullied for no reason. And you're seeking for my help because you want to help him regain his confidence and make those bullies realize their mistake and apologize to your friend. Mumbled Amai while trying to process the information he just received at that moment. Yes, I want to help him to open up. Because if he continues to lives like this, I'm sure somewhere in near future he might even consider ending his life. So I just want him to muster some courage to face his fears. Spoke Hiro after revealing his true plans to Amai. At first he was doing all those things for the sake of quest. 
But as he dived deeper into the story of Masao, he felt sincerely sorry for Masao. After all in his previous life, he also had ended his life because of some similar reasons. After listening to Hiro's elaboration, Amai paused for a while. Standing in front of Hiro, as if he was in some kind of deep thinking, Amai looked lost in his own thoughts. Upon seeing the expression on Amai's face, Hiro too kept his mouth shut. In order to not disturb him, he kept his lips tightly sealed. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Outside the coffee shop, Tatsuki and Naoto had been waiting for Hiro and Amai. And since the moment the two of them left for the restroom, 15 minutes had already passed. Continuously tapping his right foot against the floor, Tatsuki was trying his best to hold him back from exploding. Naoto who was standing right beside him was simply browsing through his phone without reacting. Finally as Tatsuki's patience ran out, he abruptly stopped his leg, scrunched his brows and cussed, FK. What's taking them this long? Tatsuki's sudden cussing startled Naoto and he nearly dropped his phone from his hands. Geez, did a demon possess you? Sounding somewhat irritated, Naoto mumbled. Paying no attention to Naoto, Tatsuki shrugged and mumbled, just how long are they gonna take? Finally after thinking for a while, Amai opened his mouth, since you're doing this for your friend, I'll help you. Hearing Amai's response, Hiro's lips curled up and a smile appeared in his face. With his eyes gleaming, Hiro mumbled sounding all excited, really? You're really gonna help me? Since I value friendship very much, I'm doing this for the sake of your friendship. Amai replied in a calm manner. Although I don't like hitting or scaring kids, I'll make use of those useless bunch of delinquent bastards from my class. Continued Amai with a sinister smile on his face. One could tell just by looking at his smile that he was planning something really sinister. However at that moment, the only thing Hiro cared about was Amai's willingness to help him. And thus the feeling of gratitude clouded his vision. Thank you. Hiro lowered his head, thank you very much. With the help of Amai, he was sure that he could humble those bullies and make them apologize to Masao and also complete part of his quest at the same time. Although just by humbling those bullies and making them apologize to Masao, Hiro wouldn't solve his problem in its entirety. However by doing that Hiro could drastically reduce the chance of Masao skipping the classes. And it could also help Masao to have a better school life. After all regaining one's lost confidence and overcoming from a painful experience required quite a bit of time and the scar left by such incidents wouldn't heal overnight, Hiro didn't want to hurry. He was in no rush. But for now we should head out. We've stayed in the restroom for way too long. And also you didn't forget about Naoto and Tatsuki, right? They're still waiting for us. Saying such, Amai began to walk out of the restroom. But before Amai could leave the restroom, Hiro stopped him, ah wait. Hearing him, Amai slightly nodded his head. Please don't tell about this to Naoto and Tatsuki. Hiro requested. With a smile on his face, Amai nodded his head and waved his hand, gesturing Hiro to follow him. But just as they exited the restroom, they witnessed Tatsuki's angry face. His mask tucked inside his pocket, his bare face was looking somewhat red. His brows were scrunched and there was visible anger in his face. Flaring his nostrils, Tatsuki spoke while staring at them with his cold eyes, what took you two so long? Were you guys perhaps sleeping inside the restroom? Quickly thinking of an excuse, Hiro mumbled, while coming out of the restroom, I saw few girls from my class. So we were hiding inside the restroom. With an awkward smile on his face, Amai nodded his head, yeah. Haha, <laughs> they were really crazy. Squinting his eyes, Tatsuki was somewhat skeptical about Hiro's reasons for being late. If so, where are they right now? Sounding somewhat skeptical, Tatsuki questioned. Well they just went downstairs. So maybe they're in one of the woman's fashion store. Replied Hiro without any delay. While making their way towards the coffee shop, Hiro had memorized the location of different stores present inside the mall. Having memorized the location of several stores, that information came really handy at that moment. Chapter 116 Wizard since Tatsuki couldn't deny the fact that there were quite a lot of women's clothing store in the floor below, he had no other choice but to believe Hiro's words. Although he was a bit hesitant, he still accepted Hiro's words, nonetheless. Fine, I'll trust your words, Tatsuki mumbled while pouting his face. Hearing Tatsuki's response, Hiro and Amai, both of them released a short sigh of relief and impetuously smiled at each other, while exchanging glances with each other. So now if you've cleared your doubts then shall we shop something? After all if we go empty handed then the coach is obviously gonna get suspicious of us. And if he somehow finds out about our lies, 
he'll never permit us to leave the hostel again. Naoto implied. Then let's head to the sports store first. Amai suggested. I too have few things which I need to buy. After that the four of them did a bit of shopping. Hiro bought some sorts, short shocks and two comfortable tracksuits. He still hadn't used his money which his parents had provided him before leaving home. Naoto and Tatsuki, the two of them bought two pair of shocks each and some undergarments. Amai bought himself some sports wear and some tapes for taping his knuckles. And by the time, they finished their shopping, it was already 2.05 p.m. Now I think we should head back to the hostel. After all the coach has strictly warned us to be back by 3. Naoto spoke while looking at his phone, Tatsuki and Hiro both of them nodded their head. Before we head out, can you give me your phone for a while, Hiro? Amai asked for Hiro's phone before heading out. Hiro then took his phone out from his pocket and handed it to Amai. Hiro was using a decent Android phone at that moment. Since he wasn't a big fan of expensive mobile phones, he hadn't bought anything expensive for him despite earning quite a hefty sum of money from NewTube. Although he wasn't in charge of his money or that's what he still believed since his parents hadn't disclosed the secret that they were saving the money under his name. Do you have a Facebook or Instagram account? Questioned Amai while typing something on Hiro's phone. I do, but I don't use it. Replied Hiro. However I'll be opening a new account today. Well that works as well. Saying such Amai handed him his phone back. I've put my number so call me once you make your account. After all I still need to know the identity of the bullies which you mentioned about earlier. Although Hiro had disclosed everything to Amai, he still hadn't provided Amai with the pictures of the bullies. And without knowing how they look, Amai couldn't do anything. Thank you Senior Amai, I'll call you later after making an account. Tokushima, Japan. Inside a traditional Japanese-style two-story wooden house, at the second floor, Akashi, the spiky-haired guy was lying on his bed, fiddling with his phone. That idiot hasn't contacted me even once after moving to Kawasaki. Has he already forgotten about me? Mumbled Akashi while putting down his phone. Though he already told me that he couldn't use mobile phone in the hostel except during weekends, however it has already been about a month since he left for Kawasaki. And he still hasn't contacted me. While frowning his brows Akashi mumbled to himself. He kept on thinking about Hiro. And the more he thought about him, the more he got agitated. Arg. Let's not think anything negative. He's not the type of guy who'd abandon his friends. Speaking such, he rose from his bed. He then walked towards the window to get some cold air to cheer him up. Taking a deep breath, he then started to stare blankly at the night sky. The night sky was just like a painting, beautiful and full of colors against the inky, black abyss. The canopy of stars were flickering like the flames of spectral candles and luminous glow of the moon was cutting through the darkness. And looking at the serene glow of the crescent moon, he felt at ease. Lost in the beautiful scenery in front of him, he completely forgot about his worries. Ding. Just then a sound of notification came from his phone. Despite hearing the notification, he didn't react and instead ignored the sound of the notification. Finally after about five minutes, he lifted his gaze away from the night sky. He then walked towards his bed. Throwing himself in his bed, Akashi then picked up his phone. And just as he turned on his phone, he saw a notification from the Instagram. It was a follow request from an account named Wizard. And the account didn't have a profile picture yet. Who's this wizard guy? Mumbled Akashi. Well, the only wizard I know is. Hero. It's from Hero. Excitedly mumbling such, Akashi abruptly rose from his bed. Instead of using his real name, Hero had opted for using an alias. And since he went with the name of Soccer Wizard back then, he used Wizard as his alias for his Instagram account. In order to prevent people from searching his name online, he had intentionally used an alias. After all his real purpose of making that account was to communicate with his close friends. Quickly accepting the follow request, he then immediately sent a follow request to Hero since Hero had also kept his account private. Hero however didn't accept his request right away. And as impatient as Akashi was he began to message Hero. It's you right, man, you took so long, yo man, why aren't you replying? After about a minute, Hero finally accepted his follow request and messaged him back. Yup it's me, your friend Hero. How have you been Akashi? Sorry I was occupied with something. Akashi who was glued to his phone didn't take long to respond. Just as he received Hero's messages, instead of messaging him, he video called him. Ring, ring, ring. Hero picked up the call. He was inside his room seated at his bed. Yuya, Shunta and Shun, the three of them were also in Hiro's room at that moment. 
What took you so long to answer? Complained Akashi as soon as Hiro picked the call. Well we were discussing something. Hiro replied. We, sounding somewhat confused, Akashi questioned. Since he couldn't see the rest of his three friends in the screen, he was confused by Hiro's use of pronouns. Wait a while, mumbled Hiro. Chapter 117 Video Call Noticing Akashi's dumbfounded look, Hiro then turned his camera towards his friends present in his room. Pointing his camera towards Yuya, Shunta and Shun, Hiro introduced them to each other. These guys here are my teammates. Yuya, Shunta and Shun. Hiro introduced his friends. Ahum, former teammates. Coughing a little, Yuya spoke sarcastically. Hearing the sarcasm, Shunta and Shun burst out into laughter. And as he introduced the three of them to Akashi, all of them waved their hands towards the camera, greeting Akashi with cheerful smile on their faces. Akashi too quickly changed his tone and introduced himself politely to Hiro's friends. Noticing the sudden change in Akashi's tone, Hiro couldn't help himself from staring at Akashi with his eyes wide open. As if he had seen something mind-blowing, he just couldn't handle the sudden change in Akashi's tone. When did this idiot learn to speak so politely? Man he's even more unpredictable than my system. Hiro thought to himself, and as the four of them started to chat with each other, Yuya snatched the phone away from his hands. Since both the sides were close to Hiro, instantly the four of them clicked with each other. As if the four of them were already friends with each other, they completely forgot about Hiro at that moment. Alright, what kind of girls do you guys like? Asked Akashi while making a serious face. Huh, what are they talking about? Suddenly they're talking about girls. With a dumbfounded look on his face, Hiro thought after hearing the progress of their conversation. Wasn't he pissed at me for not calling him, a moment ago? A girl with cute face and curvaceous body. Shun replied with his tanned cheeks turning kinda red. Hiro could tell who he was talking about just by hearing those simple words. Minami Miura, thought Hiro after hearing Shun's reply. Just why don't you reveal her name too? Giggled Yuya. Yeah, he has a crush on this girl named Minami Miura from our school. While smiling Shunta revealed the name of Shun's crush. Although I've been hearing some rumors that she's interested in Hiro instead. You. Shun gritted his teeth as he jumped atop Shunta, playfully. It happened to you too. Akashi in tone sounding somewhat surprised. Hearing Akashi's reply, Shun paused and replied, What do you mean by you too? There was this girl named Nanami whom I had a crush on. And I only found it recently that she had a crush on Hiro instead. Akashi revealed. And as Akashi revealed that information, all four of them switched their attention towards Hiro. Staring at him coldly, they looked like they were about to commit murder. Noticing their gaze, Hiro knew they were up to something. I'm not at fault guys. I don't even know them much. Spoke Hiro while trying to defend himself. April he hadn't done such things intentionally. As expected the three of them then launched towards Hiro while yelling, it's all because of your good looks. Damn, I'm so jealous of your looks. Cried out Shun. The four of them continued to wrestle playfully for a while. Akashi who could hear them loud and clear was laughing till his stomach started to ache. Finally as they calmed down, Akashi spoke again, by the way, what do you think of Hiro's footballing talent? Hearing Akashi's question, the smile on their face faded away. All of a sudden the ambience around them got ghastly silent. While making a serious expression, Yuya blurted out, an unsurpassable talent. I do enjoy playing with him. But sometimes his talent, intimidates me. Shunta added with his voice slightly shaking. I feel the same as well. He's already a nightmare for goalkeepers and defenders. I wonder how lethal he'll be once he makes it to the professional stage. Shun mumbled while looking at Hiro with eyes full of admiration. Akashi who was listening to their answers from the other side of the phone, nodded seriously. I can relate to that. But as his friend and as his teammate who played with him since he was a kid. I can tell you all that if you learn from him, you all will definitely improve. With his guidance, I made it to the nationals. And for that I'll always be grateful to him. Akashi spoke with great admiration. Although Akashi never once revealed about it to Hiro but he was always really grateful to Hiro for helping him improve. Hearing such words of admiration, Hiro felt his body tingling. With the sides of his lips twitching, he tried to control himself from smiling. With his heart filled with a sensation of warmth, he was extremely happy to hear such warm words from his friends. However as happy as he was, he maintained a poker face and acted as if their warm words didn't affect him in any way. I wonder if he'll become the first Asian player to win a Ballon d'Or in the near future. Shunta added, well I'm not sure about it. 
but it's likely possible since by that time Messi and Ronald would have already hanged their boots. Yuya joked, but don't forget about Mbappe and Haaland. They both have already won Golden Boy Award for the year 2017 and 2020 respectively. By the time Hero moves to Europe, they'll already be in their prime. Replied Shun, you guys are forgetting about Pedri, Saka, Bellingham, Foden and many more. The world is still filled with vast number of talented players. And who knows what kind of monsters are hiding. Hero too joined in on the conversation. Although he knew about the name of the future winners of the Ballon d'Or, he decided to keep it a secret. Also there was also the possibility of the future changing. Since his regression could trigger a butterfly effect. As small as it is any changes in the past would directly affect the future after all. Suddenly their casual conversation steered into football talks. Talking about the possible future winner of Ballon d'Or, all five of them expressed their own opinions. And as such the five of them kept on conversing about football for nearly two hours. Chapter 118 Undead Crown Monday, November 12, 2021 In an alleyway, bunch of guys dressed in black hotties who looked like gangsters were gathered together. With the lower part of their faces covered by a black handkerchief with a design of skull, only their eyes were visible. The black hottie that those guys were wearing were perfectly identical with each other because of the design of human skull wearing a crown printed at the back of their hotties. I, really don't get it, has our, undead crown, gang fallen to this degree that we're stationed here in an alleyway to scare some bunch of kids. A scrawny looking guy complained. Indeed and why does he want us to hit those kids with football instead of our hands? I'm not even good at playing football. A somewhat fat looking guy with slicked back black hair nodded his head while pointing at the football which he was carrying in his left hand. Hearing their complaints, suddenly a guy of average height who was sitting in a goblet squat position stood up and walked towards the fat guy who was holding the ball in his hands. With a rubber band, he had tied his medium long black hair into a man bun. Some lawson strands of his hair which broke free from the rubber band were dangling freely in front of his fierce looking black eyes as he made his way towards the fat guy. And just as the guy with the man bun reached the fat guy, he abruptly took the ball from his hands and spoke in a somewhat irritated tone, then why don't you go and fight with him? Upon hearing the words of the guy with the man bun, the fat guy lowered his gaze. His movement froze and as if he was afraid of something, he couldn't reply anything. How can we face that demon am I, Hanagaki? He could literally take on an entire gang by himself. Replied the scrawny looking guy from before. Yeah, last time when we messed with him, we ended up in hospital bed. And not to mention those MMA freaks who are supporting him, they have clearly warned us that if we even touch a strand of his hair or piss him off, they'll use us as a punching bag. Another guy with somewhat brown hair and tawny colored pupils joined in. Then just do as he says, if you don't want to get beaten instead. Hanagaki in tone sounding somewhat pissed. Just then another guy with straight black hair came running towards them. Panting heavily, he looked out of breath. Even so despite heaving so heavily, he spoke, they're coming. Hearing his words, all of the guys present there at that moment rushed towards the end of the alleyway to hide themselves. Coming from the other side of the alleyway was Masato and his underlings dressed in school uniform, probably heading to school. Joking and laughing, they were making their way towards the place where those guys dressed in black hotties from before were hiding. Completely unaware of the danger which was about to befall on them, Masato and his underlings were goofily walking without any care. It must be so nice to have permission to skip the school. Spoke Kitsu, the fox-faced guy. Man I wish I could skip classes. Another guy sighed. They were obviously talking about Masao, since he had been absent from the school for more than two weeks already. Talking such, they kept on walking. And as they approached the intersection at the end of the alleyway, they got ambushed by those black hooded guys. Seeing those guys a few of the underlings of Masato tried to scream, hell. But before they could scream, those black hooded guys covered their mouth and prevented them from screaming. Quickly encircling them, those black hooded guys completely blocked their escape route. Intimidating and tall, each and every single one of those guys looked very terrifying. Who? Shuddered Masato with a terrified look on his face. Who are you all? I think you've got the wrong person. As talkative as Kitsu was, he kept on rambling, out of fear. Just follow us silently, we've got something to talk to you guys. Spoke Hanagaki in an intimidating way. Hearing Hanagaki's response, Masato stealthily looked to his left and right. Searching for an escape route, he was prepared to abandon his friends and flee away all by himself. But Hanagaki and his friends simply left no route open for him to make his run. 
Unable to find any route open for him to make his escape, Masato yielded to the power of Undead Crown Gang. Okay, meekly replied Masato while slightly nodding his head. Good choice. Hanagaki mumbled, praising Masato's choice. Ah right, if any of you tries to escape or scream, I'll promise you that I'll find your house and torture you for the rest of your life. As if he was simply suggesting them, Hanagaki spoke such threatening without raising his voice, calmly. So be a good kid and follow this brother silently. The fat guy from before added. Hearing such threatening words, Kitsu and the other guys started to tremble. Chattering their teeth, the complexion of their skin turned pale. Their hearts started to beat faster and faster as if it was going to pop out of their mouth. Their eyes wandered around them erratically. Some of them were gulping their saliva non-stop that their mouths soon turned dry. Even so out of fear, nobody among them dared to make a single noise. Shrinking their body, they continued to follow Hanagaki and the other fellows without questioning anything. The more they walked, the more silent their surrounding got. The houses in the surrounding got less and less as well. And finally after walking for about five minutes, they arrived in an abandoned apartment under construction. The incomplete four-story apartment building's concrete pillars were covered with green mosses. Few of its walls were built while almost more than 60% of its walls were wide open. Looking at the gloomy incomplete apartment building in front, Masato thought to himself, isn't this that building which was abandoned after a guy killed himself? This is that haunted apartment building, cried out Kitsu with his eyes wide open. With tears forming in his eyes, Kitsu began to cry and beg, no. Please don't take us there. Chapter 119 Blaming Game The morning sun was shining brilliantly and spreading its warm rays across the surface of the vast land. The blue sky was as clear as still water and few lumps of white clouds of different shapes and sizes were floating freely in the far-off horizon. However with the winter making its appearance, the atmosphere was still kinda chilly, despite the sunny day. And the abandoned apartment building in front of Masato still looked spooky even during the daytime. Did you already forgot about what I said earlier? Hanagaki, the guy with man bun questioned politely after hearing the cries of Kitsu and few other guys. But, this place is hunted. With tears rolling down his eyes, Kitsu cried, Libred.com. Then I'll let you meet the ghost of this place today. Hanagaki mumbled casually while looking Kitsu in the eyes. And if you keep talking then maybe I'll send you to his world as well. And as Hanagaki was speaking, suddenly he scrunched his brows and grabbed Kitsu's chin with his right hand. He then threatened Kitsu, so if you don't want to turn into a ghost yourself then keep your mouth shut. Hearing Hanagaki's statement, a shiver ran down the spines of other kids present there at that moment. Even Masato looked extremely terrified. Some of them were even on the verge of wetting their pants. Please let me go, cried out Kitsu in muffled voice. Without making any sound the rest of the kids were also sobbing and begging in muffled voices. Masato and his underlings, all of them were almost in the same condition. Hearing their cries, Hanagaki increased his grip and squeezed Kitsu's cheeks even more tighter than before. Squeezing his cheeks, Hanagaki then yelled furiously, just shut the fk up and follow me. Hanagaki's roar scared the shit out of them. Feeling totally breathless, Masato's heart stopped for about three seconds. As strong as he made himself appear in front of other kids, Masato was actually very weak. He was that guy who was strong to weak and weak to strong. He was the type of guy who liked to prey on weak guys to satisfy his ego. After that Hanagaki and the rest of the guys from Undead Crown Gang led them inside the abandoned building. Wandering their eyes here and there, Masato and his underlings fearfully followed Hanagaki and others. The inside of the building was even more creepier than its outer appearance. Cobwebs of spiders were present in almost every pillar and corners. Dark and gloomy, some of the walls contained red stains on it which looked like blood. And as they moved further deep inside the building, a musky smell of soil and rotten smell of dead mouse made them cover their nose. What's this smell? While contorting his face and grabbing his nose, Masato questioned. However nobody from the undead crown gang replied to his questions. And the fatty behind his back simply gave him a push and spoke, keep on moving. Finally after walking for a while, Hanagaki suddenly stopped. They arrived in a spacious room with a huge wall. Now then all of you will answer my few questions. And if I'm satisfied I might let you go and if I'm not then who knows what I'll do. Hanagaki mumbled while staring at them. I heard that you guys are bullies. Is it right? Hanagaki questioned. No sir. No sir. Almost all of them denied the accusations and shook their heads, immediately. Oh okay. Hanagaki murmured. Then for the second question. Hanagaki continued his questioning. 
Then it wasn't you guys who bullied our boss's cousin, right? No sir. We haven't troubled anyone. Never in my life have I ever bullied anyone. Masato replied. The rest of his underlings too shook their head and denied Hanagaki's claims. Oh, then I might be wrong. But if you're telling lies then the consequences will be really bad. Hanagaki mumbled while walking back and forth. Suddenly one of the underling of Masato asked curiously, Sir what's the name of your boss's cousin? Masao Kurimoto. Hanagaki replied while turning his gaze towards the guy who questioned him. Hearing Masao's names, they began to panic. Their body temperature suddenly started to rise and they started to sweat profusely all of a sudden. They never imagined that Masao had a cousin who was a gangster. After hearing Masao's names, they knew that they could no longer lie to Hanagaki. But since the main culprit was Masato and most of them were only following Masato, they could get away unscratched if they just told Hanagaki the truth. And if they could simply put the blame on Masato and hang him on the guillotine then they could save themselves from being hung on the guillotine. That's what Masato's underlings started to think. Masato on the other hand started to panic even more than other. Hearing Masao's name, his heart skipped a beat. And suddenly it started to beat erratically. Slowly turning his gaze towards his friends or that's what he thought until he was caught by a gangster, he found them all sweating profusely. At that moment Kitsu, the fox-faced guy suddenly opened his mouth, it's all Masato's fault. I tried to stop him several times but he never listened to me. Sir he was the one who bullied him. Hearing Kitsu's words, Masato frantically yelled, what are you speaking Kitsu? To save themselves, Kitsu and other guys had decided to put the blame on Masato. I'm speaking the truth, Kitsu replied, he was the one who made Masao his bread shuttle. Showing off his strength, he often hit Masao. And we only followed him because we feared his strength. Oh, is that so? Hanagaki questioned after hearing Kitsu's claims. That's right sir. We're innocent sir. We only followed his will. The rest of the guys nodded their head and pleaded not guilty. How could you all put all the blame on me? Wasn't it your idea to traumatize Masao by mentioning the name of his dead best friend Kitsu? And it wasn't only me who used him as bread shuttle, you all guys were involved as well. And it wasn't only me who beat him and oppressed him, you all did the same as well. Masato after hearing the accusations of his underlings started to have a meltdown. Exactly as predicted by Amai. They're all putting the blame on that Masato guy. Thought Hanagaki after hearing their words. And as time progressed, they kept blaming each other. The blaming game progressed. Hanagaki was still thinking that everything was planned and predicted by Amai. However the real mastermind behind the scene was Hiro. He was the one who had meticulously planned everything. Chapter 120 Torture Faced with a greater threat, Masato and his underlings did exactly what most of the people would do in that kind of situation, put the blame on someone else to save their own neck. Don't act like you all are innocent now. Three weeks ago, I saw you guys venting your anger on Masao in the school toilet because you were scolded by teacher in class. Masato revealed, Oh you wanna talk about such stuffs? Then I'll tell you sir. Once he hit Masao so hard on his solar plexus that he was literally coughing blood. And do you know why he did that? He did it to test his fighting skills. Whenever he learns a new fighting move, he tests his skills on Masao. Kitsu started to dig even deeper on Masato's wrongdoings. And since his parents were one of the major shareholder of the school, the school somehow covered up that whole incident and let him off the hook with only a single warning. This kids are even vicious than us. Thought Hanagaki while hearing their wrongdoings. Are they even kids? They're like devil with the appearance of kids. Enough, shouted the fat guy with slicked back black hair. Hearing his furious roar, Masato, Kitsu and the rest, all of them shut their mouth. All the people present there were startled by his sudden roar. Hanagaki, we don't have all day to listen to their yapping. So, let's just finish our task and quickly head back. Sounding very irritated, the fat guy mumbled. Hanagaki nodded his head and replied, yeah you're right. Let's just do what we were told. Hanagaki then turned his attention towards Masato and his underlings and spoke while pointing at the huge wall in front, all of you go stand in front of that wall. But we're not at fault sir. We're innocent sir, cried Kitsu. The rest of the guys also started to plead for their innocence. Masato on the other hand remained completely silent. He knew that he wouldn't escape unscratched no matter what he did. He had already yielded to his fate. Perhaps you didn't hear what I said. Speaking such, Hanagaki walked towards the side of Kitsu. Bang, Hanagaki then all of a sudden, punched Kitsu hard on his stomach. Getting hit on his stomach, Kitsu let out a painful scream, arg. Followed by his scream, he immediately threw up. 
Drool coming out of his mouth, he fell down on the ground while grabbing his stomach. Writhing in pain, he looked very miserable at that moment. Witnessing the pathetic sight of Kitsu crying and moaning in pain, the rest of the guys present there started to panic even more. Trembling with fear, they were having trouble moving their body. Their faces completely pale, there was a fear in their eyes. Did you guys not hear me? Hanagaki yelled furiously. I said move. The hotted guys who were standing behind them gave them a rough push on their back. Getting pushed from behind, some of them stumbled and fell on the ground, roughly. And you two get up and stand over there. Kicking Kitsu lightly, Hanagaki commanded Kitsu to stand in front of the wall. However Kitsu couldn't bring himself to move his body. And he kept on moaning in pain while grabbing his stomach. Seeing his unwillingness to move, Hanagaki then commanded other gang members to carry him towards the wall, carry him to the wall. We can't leave anyone out. Hearing such, two scrawny guys grabbed each of Kitsu's arms and carried him towards the wall. The rest of the kids walked on their own. What are they going to do? Are they going to pound us with rocks? Shuddered one of the guy while walking towards the wall. And as all of them nervously lined up in front of the wall, Hanagaki spoke, you might want to cover your face and private parts. And if anybody dares to run away, mark my words I'll throw a stone at you and open your skull. Hearing such threatening words, Masato and his underlings immediately covered their face and temples with their hands. Except Kitsu who was still grabbing his stomach, all of the other guys nervously covered their faces. Bring the balls, Hanagaki commanded. Upon hearing his command one of the guy dressed in black hotties left the place. Reflect on what you've done wrong. And if you want to take revenge on us, feel free to come and look for us. However I'll warn you before you decide to take revenge, if any of you gets caught at that time, just know that it's the end for you. Oh, and before we start your punishment I'd like to add another thing, if we find any of you guys reporting this incident to anyone else, let's say your friends, parents or police, then be prepared to face the consequences. Sounding all serious, Hanagaki threatened the kids in front. Just then the guy who left earlier, came back with a sack of football. Make sure to remember this pain and repent on your actions. Speaking such, Hanagaki and the rest of members of Undead Crown Gang started to pound Masato and his underlings with football. And since the ball kept on rebounding back to them because of the wall in front of them, Hanagaki and the others kept on hitting Masato and his underlings with the ball, non-stop without any break for about 10 minutes. Getting hit by the ball, over and over again from such a close distance, all of them shrunk their body into a shape of ball to prevent themselves from getting hit. For that entire 10 minutes, they all kept on screaming in pain and the pain kept on intensifying with each hit. Despite the gradual decrease in the power of impact, it felt like getting hit by a rock instead of a ball after some moment. The part of their body where they were hit the most had completely turned blue and was starting to swell. However luckily not a single one among them lost their consciousness. But still those 10 minutes of pounding felt like an hour-long torture to them. Patches of blue marks from the collision with the ball appeared all over their body. Chapter 121 Awkward Situation Hiding behind a staircase corner, Minami and her friends were stealing a glance at the hallway in front of them. Look he's coming, spoke one of the girl after taking a stealthy peek at the hallway. Hearing such, Minami's cheeks turned completely red. She then shyly questioned, are you sure it's a good idea to ask his number so blatantly? If you keep on hesitating then someone else might steal him away. So muster up some courage and initiate a conversation. Spoke another girl with a ponytail. I don't know. My heart is beating so fast right now. Feeling her heartbeat, Minami mumbled. What if he finds me creepy for asking him about his number so blatantly? Who in his right mind would think? Such about you, the somewhat fat girl who was stealing glances of Hiro spoke. The other girl with ponytail nodded her head and spoke, indeed. You're the maiden of our school. Almost every single boys in our school is chasing after you. Looks, athleticism, personality, you name it, you've got it all. Those three girls who were hiding behind the corner were talking about Hiro. In the hallway in front of them, Hiro was making his way towards his classroom. And as usual bunch of girls who had a crush on him were flocking over him. What's so great about him? It's not like he's a celebrity. Some guys who were jealous of him were talking with each other. And obviously they weren't praising him. Rather, they were badmouthing him. He's almost here, spoke the fat girl. Hesitating to converse with Hiro, Minami tried to run away. Maybe we should head to our class right now. What are you cowering for? Speaking such the girl with ponytail gave her a gentle push. Upon getting pushed, she stumbled out of the corner where she was hiding. And as she stumbled out of the corner, 
She spoke in somewhat annoyed tone, why did you push me all of a sudden? Excuse me, Hiro mumbled feeling all confused. Since he had just arrived there, he had no idea what she was talking about. Oh sorry I wasn't talking to you. I was just talking with my friends here. Minami apologized to Hiro while pointing her index finger at the corner. I didn't know that you were friends with Ghost. With a sweet smile on his face, Hiro joked. What are you talking ABO? While speaking such, she turned towards the corner. But there was nobody in the corner. Unable to find her friends, she went completely blank and thus, she couldn't even complete her sentence. Completely dumbfounded, Minami froze on her place. With her cheeks and ears turning red, she was embarrassed to her heart's core, as if she had an egg on her face. What will he think of me? And where are those two idiots? He's definitely thinking of me as some kind of weirdo. Several thoughts appeared in her mind. She couldn't even bring herself to turn her head towards Hiro to face him. Good luck with your friends. Speaking such in a cheerful tone, Hiro walked past her. The girls who were swarming around Hiro quite enjoyed her precious reaction. At first they were looking at her very coldly, as if she was their mortal enemy. But after seeing her in that awkward situation, they all had a smile on their faces. They very much enjoyed her dumbfounded look. Even after Hiro walked quite far away from her, Minami was still standing at that same place with that same facial expression from before, completely dazed. Running down the stairs, the fat girl and the girl with ponytail came rushing towards her. And as they approached her, the fat girl asked excitedly, what happened? Did you get his number? However Minami didn't reply anything at all. Neither did she blink her eyes nor did she open her mouth. What happened to you? Did you see a ghost? The girl with ponytail asked with a concerned look on her face. Hearing the word ghost, she was brought back to her senses. And as soon as she came back to her senses, she raised her both hands and placed it atop the shoulder of the girl with ponytail. Her brows arched, she made a serious expression and spoke, Ghost you say? Now I'll let you two see the ghost in me. What happened to you Minami? Are you getting possessed? Feeling slightly scared, the fat girl asked. Yeah, why, why, why are you acting like this? The girl with ponytail shuddered. As if Minami was about to hack at her. She was tightening her grip and bringing her face closer to the face of the girl with the ponytail. With their brows frowning, the two girls were getting more and more anxious and scared of her. And suddenly Minami hugged the girl with the ponytail and started sobbing, why did you two leave me all alone? He's probably thinking of me as a weirdo now. Her eyes moistened and her lips pouted, she whined like a little girl at that moment. Her crying voice was very sweet and as innocent as a little baby. Despite that her sobbing face looked extremely pretty. Seeing her sobbing, the two girls standing there could guess that things didn't go well. And thus, they started to comfort her. Patting Minami's head, they tried to calm her down. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Finally after walking for a while, Hiro arrived in front of his class. And by that time, the girls swarming him who weren't from his class had all left away for their own classes as well. Sliding the door of the classroom, he unlocked the door of his classroom. And just as he was about to enter his classroom, his eyes landed on a familiar face. Fair-skinned guy with chubby cheeks and round face, coupled with black pupils and straight black hair, the somewhat obese guy was sitting right beside his chair. The guy was none other than Masao. When he was absent from school. Chapter 122 Hope Noticing the sight of Masao, Hiro wasted no time and immediately went over to him to talk to him. However Masao who looked lost in his own world didn't even notice the sight of Hiro until he heard the voice of Hiro. Good morning Masao, greeted Hiro with a warm smile on his face. Ah, hearing Hiro's voice which came out of nowhere, Masao was startled. Masao then greeted him back a bit hesitantly as if something was bothering him, Goo. Good morning hi, Hiro. Looking up close, Masao's complexion seemed rather pale. And as if he hadn't slept well for a long time, beneath his black eyes, there were few dark circles. Are you sick Masao, or is something bothering you? Hiro asked straightforwardly after noticing his sickly appearance. Ah number, I'm completely fine, replied Masao while trying to hide his face. Because of Hiro's behavior towards him and the way he spoke with him, Masao despite being afraid of socializing felt somewhat comfortable talking to Hiro. He obviously doesn't look fine thought Hiro after hearing Masao's response. He knew that something was wrong with him but he didn't want to force him to say it, so Hiro slightly nodded his head and replied looking somewhat concerned, is it so? It just looked to me that you were sick. Thank you for worrying about me. But I'm completely fine, 
Masao replied and turned his gaze away from him, as if he was deliberately trying to avoid conversing with Hiro further. And before Hiro could say more, Hiro was interrupted by the girl who sat at the second row, I've been texting you but why aren't you replying Hiro? Silky smooth black hair, triangular face, fair-skinned, small black eyes, her name was Akane Kuramaya. She had put on a little bit of makeup on her face. As she came closer to him, a fragrant smell of perfume lingered around his nose. Delicate, sweet aroma that is floral, herbal, and evergreen woodsy at the same time, it was the smell of lavender flower. Not too overbearing and not too humble, Hiro found the smell pretty pleasant. Ah sorry, I don't use my account much, replied Hiro with a pretended smile on his face. Although he quite liked the smell of her perfume, he wasn't fond of the person who was wearing that perfume. You don't need to apologize, she replied while sliding her medium long black hair behind her ears. But are you free this Sunday? I just happen to have two tickets to the amusement park. As if she was trying to seduce him, she was trying her best to show her charms. However it wasn't working well on Hiro. It wasn't the first time she tried to ask him out. The week before, she had asked him out to go to watch football match with her. I'm sorry, I have match that day. Hiro politely declined her offer by making up some excuses. Just then Masato and his underlings entered the classroom, looking completely beaten. Sore and exhausted, they were having trouble walking. And unlike other days, those guys were walking separately. As if there was some kind of farce going on between them, they looked divided. Witnessing the appearance of Masato and his underlings, Hiro could tell that the plan he had planned was carried out without any fail. Thank you Amai, thank you very much for complying to my request. Hiro thanked Amai inside his head. Despite looking completely beaten, Hiro wasn't a bit concerned about them at that moment, he was concerned about someone else. Turning his gaze towards Masao, he wanted to see Masao's reaction. To his right, Masao was trying his best to avoid locking eyes with anyone. His lips tightly sealed and his gaze locked at the table, he looked pretty terrified. He looks pretty terrified, well it's only natural for him to feel that way after experiencing such horrible experience. Thought Hiro while pitying Masao. Hiro then again shifted his gaze towards Masato and his underlings. Entering the classroom, Masato and his underlings began to make their way towards Masao instead of their seat. I did ask Amai to make them apologize to Masao. But are they coming towards him to apologize? Or are they planning on assaulting him? If it's the later then I need to be prepared to do something. Thought Hiro while clenching his fist. Then why don't you invite me to your match hero? Akane pleaded. Akane who was standing in front of him was speaking non-stop but still his attention was on Masato and his underlings. Thus, he was only nodding his head without even paying attention to what she was speaking. The more they approached closer to Masao, the more he started to panic. Clenching his fist tightly and biting his lips, Masao was sweating profusely. Masao's hands were shaking and his heartbeat was rising. And as if his heart would jump out of his throat, his heart was beating more and more faster. Hiro too was on standby. He was prepared to take actions as fast as possible. Thus, he didn't dare take his eyes off from them, not even for a second. Kitsu the fox-faced guy was the first one to arrive at Masao's side. Standing beside Masao, he was hesitating to speak something. Noticing Kitsu on his side, Masao who was freaked out by their appearance was about to flee. And just as he was about to rise from his seat and run away, Hiro grabbed his hands. As if he touched an electric wire, a shiver ran down his body just as Hiro touched his hands. But Masao didn't let out a single scream. Slowly turning his gaze towards the hand which laid atop his hand, he found the fair-skinned hand full of calluses belonging to Hiro. Masao then slowly raised his gaze towards Hiro's face. And as he locked eyes with Hiro, Hiro slightly nodded his head. Although he was still terrified, the determined look on Hiro's face provided him some encouragement. Just like the sight of dark clouds in a dry desert, he found some hope in Hiro's eyes. Chapter 123 Lesson Learned with a newfound hope, Masao loosened his body a little and sat down. But even with his newfound hope, his body was still shaking. His body was telling him to flee from the scene. After all human beings are creature of habits. And the fear of getting beaten and traumatized by Masato and his underlings had already been ingrained deep within Masao's core. Thus, he was still preparing to run away if anything were to happen to him. Kitsu then lowered his head and spoke meekly, I'm sorry. For hurting you. Please forgive me if you can. Hearing Kitsu's apology, Masao startlingly rose from his seat. His apology was totally out of his expectations and thus, he was surprised to hear such words coming out from the mouth of Kitsu. 
The other guys too lowered their head and apologized to Masao, please forgive us Masao. We'll never bother you again. As surprised as Masao was, the rest of the students present in the classroom were even more surprised. Although not many students were present in the classroom since there were still some time left for the beginning of the class, the students present in the class all had the same reaction. They all were surprised. Those bullies are apologizing. Am I in some kind of dream? Some students present in the classroom started to gossip. Masao was totally speechless. His mind completely blank. He didn't know what to do in that kind of situation. The scene happening in front of him was dreamlike. And thus, he was still having trouble discerning between reality and dream. Turning his gaze towards Hiro, Masao then asked Hiro to pinch him, Can you pinch me Hiro? Hearing his words, Hiro grinned and replied, Don't worry. You're not in a dream. But if you're still doubting then I'll comply with your request. Saying such, Hiro pinched him. Ouch, this isn't a dream, but why are they apologizing to me all of a sudden? Questioned Masao feeling all confused. For a while, his fear was suppressed by their apology. Not because of some beating. Hiro thought to himself after hearing Masao's question. But obviously he couldn't tell him the truth, so he acted as if he didn't know anything about it. Maybe God made its appearance in their dream and guided them. Hiro grinned. So I think you should forgive them. Although it was really tough for Masao to do so, since he had been getting bullied by them for years and years. And the scars left from enduring years of pain wouldn't be healed just because of one single apology after all. So, Masao was hesitating to forgive them. Even so, none of them rose their head up and all of them continued to bow their head. Obviously not because they were sincerely remorseful but because of fear. They all feared that they would get beaten again by Hanagaki and the rest if they didn't acquire his forgiveness. Masato on the other hand was still hesitating to apologize. Although he too feared the beating, his pride wasn't letting him apologize to Masao in front of the whole class. Noticing his hesitation, Hiro decided to trigger him, enjoying the performance, Masato. You, gnashing his teeth, Masato was about to say something but he paused all of a sudden as if he remembered something. Flaring his nose, he stood tall glaring at Hiro with his protruding eyes. Just like an active volcano which was ready to erupt, he looked quite furious. But even so, he suppressed his anger, nonetheless. Witnessing his face full of anger, Masao retracted his step a little. And Masao's suppressed fear was starting to rise, once again. Masato then let out a deep breath and bowed his head. Although he was prideful, he was also scared of getting beaten. Giving in to his fear, Masato then reluctantly apologized to Masao while clenching his fist, I'm sorry Masao. I promise that I won't bother you again. Just like Masato and others who were afraid of undead crown gang, Masao too was afraid of facing Masato and his gangs. Thus out of fear, he accepted their apology, it, it's alright, I, I, forgive you guys. Hearing Masao's words, they didn't stay there for even a second more. Quickly lifting their head, they immediately made their way towards their seat. While on his way, Masato glared at other kids who were looking at him. As if he was, warning them to not speak of the things which they witnessed at that moment to anyone else, he was glaring at them with his furious eyes. Quick look away or else he might target us instead, whispered one of the student while turning his gaze away from Masato. The other students who were looking at Masato did the same thing as well. Out of fear, they shut their mouth and turned their gaze away from him. However the same couldn't be said to Hiro, he was still smiling and looking at the embarrassing state of Masato and his underlings. I hope you all have learned your lesson, otherwise I'll have to think of something even more ruthless. So get on a good track and live a good life. Mumbled Hiro under his breath while staring at Masato and his underlings. Gosh, that was terrifying and surprising at the same time. Akane mumbled while releasing a short sigh of relief. Masao on the other hand remained completely silent. His heart was still beating as fast as it was before. But after that apology, there was a subtle smile on his face. Masao was simply happy to hear from them that they wouldn't bother him again. Just then Rin too made his appearance. Casualty walking towards his seat. He said to Akane, can you move away from my seat? TCH, Akane subtly clicked her tongue and sneered, I'll go. And before she left, she said to Hiro, so where should I come to see your match Hiro? Huh, Hiro was puzzled by her words. Since he hadn't paid any attention towards her earlier and had nodded to all her statements, he wasn't aware that he had nodded to her request of inviting her to his game. Ah, about that, Hiro started to hesitate. He had absolutely no idea on how to tell her that there wasn't even a match to begin with. About that, 
He must have forgot to mention you but outsiders aren't allowed. Noticing Hiro's hesitation, Rin immediately made an excuse and covered him. Did you not tell her about that Hiro? Rin continued. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Frowning his brows, Hiro made sorrowful face. I'm sorry I can't invite you Akane. It's alright Hiro, I'll come to your next match. Akane smiled and expressed her understanding. So now can you excuse me? Rin asked her to leave. Fine, I'm going. Akane sneered. Chapter 124 League Tai Sheet Sunday March 15, 2022. The sun was shining brilliantly in the blue sky above. With new leaves starting to bud, the once naked trees which looked completely dull and lifeless was once again starting to gleam with vitality. And with the temperature rising once again, spring, the season of rebirth and awakening had begun. Panting heavily, Hiro and his teammates who had just finished their morning training were sweating profusely in the U18 pitch while looking completely exhausted. And despite the end of the training, no one had yet left the pitch. They all were waiting for some announcements from the manager. Is it about the Premier League, Senior Naoto? Questioned Hiro feeling all curious about coach's order. They all were ordered to stay at the pitch for a little longer by manager Makoto, since he had some announcements to make. I'm not sure, since there's still about a month left for the beginning of the Premier League. But it must be something related to the league. Naoto answered while taking off his goalkeeping gloves. That year's tournament was going to start from the 4th of April onwards. Takamato Cup is only a month away. How time flew by. Just yesterday it felt like I was in U15 team. Just yesterday it felt like I was helping Masao. But it's already been about six months since I joined the youth team. Thought Hiro feeling nostalgic. Maybe the tie sheet is out. Tatsuki who was just beside them doing some light stretches joined in. That makes sense. Since there's only 20 days left for the beginning of the tournament. So it's probably about the tie sheet. Naoto nodded his head. Just as they were talking, manager Makoto accompanied by few other coaches made his way towards the squad. Those old coaches, all had stern expression on their faces. Seeing the coaches, all the players present there at that moment, immediately shut their mouth and focused all their attention towards the coaches. After reaching them, the coaches then paused at a certain distance away from them. Manager Makoto then stepped forward with a sheet of paper in his hand. Ahem, before making his announcement, he coughed a bit to clear his throat. In my hand I have the list of clubs which we'll be facing against in our group. Manager Makoto spoke while raising the sheet of paper above his head. See, I was indeed right. Tatsuki grinned. Obviously we'll paste the tie sheet in the bulletin board. But before that I'll personally announce the name of clubs we'll be facing against. So everyone listen carefully. Makoto intoned in a serious way. Altogether there'll be 12 teams in our group, including us. And among those 11 teams, there are 5 high school teams. Yokohama F. Marinos, Omiya Ardesia, Aomori Yamada High School, FC Tokyo, Maybashi Ikue HS, Yokohama FC, Ryutsu Keizai Kasiwa HS, Kasiwa Reisol, Aikiritsu Funabashi HS, JFA Academy Fukushima and Kiryu Daiichi HS. This are the names of the team which we'll be competing against. Makoto read out the names of the team from the tie sheet. Since Kawasaki belonged to the eastern part of Japan, they were placed in Premier League East Group. I don't even know some of the teams in that list. Hiro mumbled casually, without thinking after hearing the name of the teams which he'll be facing against. Well, it's understandable, since it's your first time. Naoto mumbled meekly. Since the coaches were still in front of them, Naoto couldn't speak aloud. That's all for the team in our group. But there's still something left to be discussed. We still haven't selected our starting players. So I think you all know what this means. Makoto continued. Saying such, he completed his announcement. His last statement was very ambiguous. And as Makoto finished making the announcement, the players present there started to clap their hands. Although his last statement was quite ambiguous, Hiro could somewhat guess the meaning behind his statement. The spots are vacant, so bust your ass off to clench the spot. Thought Hiro after hearing the announcement made by manager Makoto. Looking around him, he found the facial expression of his teammates quite different than what it used to look before. With a spark of fire burning in their eyes, they all looked very determined. He's really one cheeky bastard. By saying such, he had initiated a war among the players. Hiro murmured under his breath with a subtle smile on his face. And just as manager Makoto was about to walk away, coach Kensuke began to gesture something. As if he was telling that he forgot something, he was reminding manager Makoto to check his pocket. 
Hiro whose attention was completely focused on manager Makoto noticed something off. Did he forgot something? Thought Hiro while looking in front. Because of their excitement, other players completely ignored the thing happening in front of them. They all were thinking about giving their best. Manager Makoto then suddenly turned around and walked towards the spot he was standing a moment ago. The coach's actions greatly confused Hiro. Stop for a moment everyone. Makoto yelled. Hearing Makoto's loud voice, the players immediately stopped clapping their hands. I thought that the announcement was over. Has coach forgot to mention something? Players began to guess and chatter among themselves. Silence. Makoto yelled once again. Hearing his roar, the players immediately shut their mouth out of fear. Makoto then spoke again. The trial for new players will be happening today. So don't disturb the new players. The announcement left almost everyone shocked. Their eyes wide open and mouth agape, they were shocked to hear such an important news. And what's more shocking was that coach Makoto had nearly forgotten about the most important news. What? The trial's happening today, but why so late? Thought Hiro with his eyes wide open after hearing the announcement. But don't worry about the trial. And just focus on giving your best. There might be few players joining or there's also a possibility that no would pass the trial this year. So saying this, I just want to remind all of you to focus on your own training. Remember the league is just 20 days away. Saying such manager Makoto finally ended his announcement for real. Chapter 125 Tryout for New Players As if they were struck by lightning, most players were utterly shocked to hear the announcement of the trial. While striking his chin, Naoto mumbled, I have been wondering about the trial. And like previous year I thought it was postponed this year too. Will we see someone as impressive as Hero from this trial? I just want another talented midfielder or winger to supply me with crosses. Feeling all excited, Tatsuki commented. Hearing Tatsuki's illogical comments which made no sense, Naoto shook his head and suggested, we need a defender right now. Maybe a fullback with good pace. We already have Shunsuke Hayashi, Umi Kajisa and Akamasa Nakahara. With those three in the defense even Leandro will have a hard time. But our midfield, it's mainly controlled by Kazuya and Hiro. So we definitely need a midfielder right now. Tatsuki presented his own suggestion which greatly contradicted to Naoto's suggestion. And as such, those two began to argue with each other. While they were arguing with each other, Hiro was wondering about something else. I just have one question though. Hiro mumbled while looking at Naoto. Ask. Turning his gaze towards Hiro, Naoto nodded his head and gestured him to ask his question. Since I didn't attend trial with other players and also since it's an open trial, I was wondering if the trials will be held separately for U15 and U18 team. Or will it be held jointly? Obviously it'll be held separately. April how can U15 kids compete against U18 players? Obviously you're not included among those kids. Naoto calmly answered his question. Staring at Hiro with his gleaming black eyes, Tatsuki nodded his head and intoned, yeah. You're a monster. The picture of you dribbling an entire line of defense by yourself when we faced against Fuji High School is still vivid in my eyes. Indeed not to mention your unbelievable 40-yard free kick against Koshu High School. For a moment I thought that I was seeing David Beckham. Naoto added, after joining the U18 team, he had played in four friendly matches altogether. And in all those matches, he had contributed to the team by either scoring a goal or delivering an assist. Although all those four teams were complete amateur teams, still after watching him play, no one could dare to point a finger on his talent. Asterisk 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 asterisk. At around 9 a.m., new players started showing at the youth facility. Players of different shapes, sizes and appearance started to flock towards the youth facility. Some alone, some with friends and some accompanied by their parents, new players made their way towards the pitch one after the other. Hiro who was seated in front of the window of his room was curiously looking at the players entering from the main gate. Standing beside Hiro, Shun was also curiously looking at the new players who were making their way towards their respective pitch. Players who had came for U15 trials were heading towards the U15 pitch. And similarly the players who had came for U18 trials were heading towards the U18 pitch as well. And not only players, but a few local reporters were also making their way inside the youth facility holding camera and microphones. Since the coaches had advised them to stay in the building during the trial, almost all the players were either in their room peeking at the new players or playing game or sleeping at the moment of trial. And coaches had specially warned Tatsuki, Naoto and Kazuya from making their appearance towards the pitch. Since they had already debuted for the senior team, 
the coaches were well aware of the reporters who were tailing them. New players continued to show one after the other. And soon the ground became so crowded that it looked like there were almost more than 150 players in the pitch. Seeing that many people, Hiro shook his head and rubbed his eyes. He then with a look of astonishment questioned Shun, did you also compete against this many players? Not that many, Shun drawled, since he was totally immersed in the event unfolding in front of him, Shun didn't notice the look of awe in Hiro's face. Damn, it might take whole day to evaluate this many players. Turning his gaze towards the players, once again, Hiro mumbled. It'll be over in at most four hours. Shun replied casually, that soon, how? Hiro mumbled in great surprise. First there'll be a test to test their physicality, after that they'll test their skills and only after passing those two tests, they'll get to the third round. And the third round is a match. Shun replied, damn, that many tests. Hiro questioned with a look of surprise on his face. There's also interview, Shun added, knock, knock, and as the two of them were talking with each while, looking at the new players in the pitch, suddenly they heard a knocking sound coming from their door. It's me Yuya, open the door, shouted Yuya from behind the door. Did you call him? asked Hiro while looking at Shun after hearing the voice of Yuya. No, Shun shook his head. Then why is he here? Wondering such, Hiro walked towards the door and unlocked the door. And as soon as he unlocked the door, he found Yuya with a wide grin on his face, in front of his door. As if he was about to do something sinister, Hiro didn't like the smile on Yuya's face. Shunta was also tagging along. Let's go and watch the trial, up close. Excitedly spoke Yuya. Yuya was planning on sneaking at the ground to spectate the trial, up close. Let's go. Shun immediately agreed to Yuya's proposal. Hiro however was a bit hesitant to go with them, since the coaches had sternly advised them to stay inside the building. And he was somewhat afraid of breaking the rule. But he was also curious about the trial. Thus out of curiosity he spoke hesitantly, but what if the coach finds out? Just disguise yourself and mix with the spectators. There are so many spectators that coaches wouldn't even notice us. Ha 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 ha, isn't my plan perfect? Laughing maniacally, Yuya explained his simple plan. Chapter 126 Advanced Technology After thinking for a while, Hiro took the risk and joined Yuya and the others. Sneakily walking on their toes, Hiro and his friends were making their way towards the pitch, carefully. Yuya who was walking in front was responsible for checking people coming from in front and updating them with the path in front. And Shun who was at the last of the queue was responsible for checking the people coming from behind. Finally, after walking on their toes for a while, they made it out of the building, totally undetected. And as they walked out of the building, they noticed a bunch of people swarming beside the fences to witness the trial. Few small-time local reporters were also present there, interviewing some of the players and spectators and covering the event. Quick hurry, waving his hands, Yuya spoke hurriedly and began to run towards the crowd. They then hurriedly ran towards the crowd of peoples gathered in front to hide themselves from the coaching staffs. Hiro and Shunta being the fastest among those four, quickly reached the crowd and mingled in the crowd. Yuya and Shun, the two of them took a little longer to reach the crowd of peoples. Sigh, successfully blending in the crowd without being noticed, they then released a long sigh of relief. Phew, Yuya released a deep breath. Luckily no one noticed us. Yeah, thankfully we made it without getting detected. My heart is still pounding. Mumbled Shunta while feeling his heartbeat. We'll go to the U15 pitch since we're still playing for U15 team. Spoke Yuya. Okay, be careful on the way. Hiro responded while nodding his head. Yuya and Shunta then headed towards the U15 pitch, skimming through the crowd. Witnessing them leave, Hiro and Shun too began to skim through the crowds to get a clear view of the U18 pitch. Finally after some searching and skimming, they arrived at a place where they could get better view of the pitch in front. Looking from behind the fence, they found about 70 to 80 players in the field. The coaches were sorting the players in different groups in the field. Do you know any of them Shun? Hiro questioned while looking at players in front. You see that guy close to coach Kensuk? Shun spoke while pointing at one of the guy. Who? That bulky guy or short guy or that bald guy? Hiro asked. That bald-headed guy who looks like a monk. His name is Akihiro Yamada. I've played against him when he was playing for Subaki Middle School. Is there anything special about him? Hiro questioned out of sheer curiosity. Yeah, his long passes and ball holding ability. He's an excellent player, Shun replied. Although he was criticized a lot by his teammates after the match when we faced against Subaki Middle School. If he's that excellent of a player then why was he criticized? 
Hiro couldn't understand the logic behind Shun's statements. His crosses were a little too advanced for the forwards of his team. They simply couldn't match the speed to catch up with his crosses. And later in the game when his teammates couldn't score the goal, he tried to do everything by himself. Although he did hold the ball well against some of our players, he still couldn't score any goals. And later because of his selfishness, he was substituted by the coach. Shun elaborated about one of the players in the field. I see. So he was simply getting hold back by his teammates. Hiro nodded his head. Then what about these players who are getting interviewed right now? Hiro questioned again while pointing at some of the players who were getting interviewed. Maybe they played exceptionally well in the nationals. Since we don't play in nationals, I don't know about them. But that jerk with two block haircut, do you see him? Slightly scrunching his brows, Shun then pointed at one of the fair skinned guy with two block haircut who was getting interviewed at that moment. Just by listening to the tone of Shun's voice and looking at his appearance, Hiro could tell that Shun didn't like that guy whom he was pointing at. Thus, he too pretended that he didn't like him, who? That arrogant looking guy. Yeah, you're right. That bastard's name is Renji Igarashi. He's so, full of himself, just because he scored two goal against me, he was acting so haughty after the match. Shun intoned while gritting his teeth. Monolid black eye, short black hair, fair skinned, Renji's facial feature were well defined. Flaunting his perfect smile by showing his clear white teeth, Renji was getting interviewed by a female reporter at that moment. Beep, everyone gather around. Blowing his whistle, Coach Kensuk ordered everybody to gather around. Hearing the coach's command, all the players including the players who were getting interviewed rushed towards the coach. Shish, the trial is about to begin, mumbled Shun, and as all the players gathered beside the coaches, the coaches then began to speak something. Since Hiro and Shun both were far away from the coaches, they couldn't hear the conversation taking place in the pitch. After a while, except 20-something players, the rest of the players began to head towards the stands. The remaining 20 players then positioned themselves in an running position outside the pitch. So for the first round they'll test their speed. Hiro mumbled, you're half correct and half wrong. Shun spoke while shaking his head. They'll be sprinting in the sidelines and slowing down in end line. And they'll be doing this for 5 laps without stopping. And while they'll be doing this their data will be calculated by the analyst present in sidelines. You see those 4 guys dressed in complete black dress with laptops. Shun continued while pointing at four guys seated in the stands opposite to them. Turning his gaze towards the four guys, Hiro nodded his head. But he still couldn't get how those four guys could calculate the data of that many players. Since there weren't many people present there to record the data. And thus, feeling all curious, Hiro questioned, but how will those four guys record the data of this many players? As if Shun was expecting that question from him, Shun grinned and replied with a confident tone, do you see those black bibs with the numbers which the players are wearing? Hiro nodded his head, there's a tiny chip installed in those bibs. And there's also a sensor placed at each corner of the pitch. So every time those players reaches the corner, their data will be collected by using some kind software by those analysts. That's how they'll record their data. Puffing his chest, Shun explained in a confident tone. Chapter 127 caught. With no change in his facial expression, Hiro then murmured softly after hearing Shun's explanation, so they're using technology to record the data. Seeing no changes in Hiro's facial expression, Shun looked quite shocked. He then questioned while staring at Hiro with his eyes wide open, you're not shocked to hear about such an amazing technology. Although I haven't experienced it myself. But I have seen way more advanced technology than these in my previous life. Thought Hiro after hearing Shun's questions. But obviously he couldn't say that to him. Thus, he immediately thought of an excuse, I have read about it before that in Europe these kind of technologies are quite common. Hearing Hiro's reply, Shun frowned his brow. He looked quite disappointed. And while the two of them were talking about technology, the people standing beside them suddenly started to cheer. Hearing their loud cheers, Hiro and Shun both of them startlingly turned their attention towards the pitch. Look, the test has started. Speaking such, Hiro tried to distract Shun. And since the sidelines weren't that big enough to accommodate all those 20 players at once, they again paired five players and formed a group of four. And in an interval of 15 seconds, one after the other, the four group of players started running. And as the final group of players completed their run, the first test finally came to an end. Completely drenched in sweat, all the players seemed extremely exhausted. The first test took about an hour to complete. And almost half of the players in the field were sent home after the end of the first test. 
With almost half of the players eliminated, there were about 40-something players left in the field for the second test. Man, this is brutal, almost half of them were wiped out, mumbled Hiro while looking at the players who were walking out of the ground. Along with the players who were eliminated, their supporters too started to exit the youth facility. Sweaty, pale, breathless and tired, many of the players who were eliminated looked extremely gloomy. While there were few optimistic ones, most of the eliminated players were all pessimistic. And there were few who were even making a fuss at the ground by saying that the evaluation was unfair and rigged. I finished way ahead of him. So why is he selected and I'm eliminated? Is it because he's one of your relatives? One of the player in the field shouted furiously, expressing his dissatisfaction with the result of the test. He's a keeper, and you're a striker, so you expect a keeper to run faster than a striker. Coach Kensuke replied calmly, but still the guy continued to yell. Because of the grief of not being selected, he wasn't willing to listen to the logic of the coaching staffs. Every time, every time there'll be some players like this. As if he was used to seeing such scene, Shun mumbled casually while looking at the players who were causing ruckus on the field. If they continue to protest in the pitch then the test will be delayed. So now what will the club do? Frowning his brows, Hiro questioned with a concerned look on his face. Nothing much, either they'll leave on their own or they'll get forcefully kicked out. Shun replied, look they're already here, Shun continued while pointing towards the main gate. From the main gate, four guys dressed in guard uniform were making their way towards the U18 pitch. While looking at the guards in confusion, Hiro questioned, I thought we only had one guard in our hostel. How come there's four new extra guards today? You're right, we do have only one guard. But those guys are temporary guards hired by the club to deal with this kind of situation. Seeing the guards, some protesters voluntarily exited the pitch, while the few who were left in the pitch were forcibly carried outside the facility. Geez, never expected that football trials would get this chaotic. Hiro mumbled, that's why we're lagging behind the world. You don't get to see such scenes in Europe. Since Shun couldn't deny his claims, he too consented to Hiro's claims and nodded his head. Although the test was indeed unfair to those players who were technically gifted and physically weak, there were few reasons for the club to focus on physically well candidates. Firstly, by selecting players with excellent physicality, the club would drastically decrease the chances of injuries. Secondly, they could deploy the player right away. Thirdly and most importantly, professional clubs were leaning towards players with excellent physicality instead of once creatively gifted players. Top-level coaches preferred fast and steady players just like Mbappe and Haaland. With the coaches leaning towards players with pace and stamina, the era of creative players like Messi, Neymar was coming to an end. After the commotion died down, the second test continued smoothly without any interruption. For the second test, the remaining players were made to perform some of the drills such as pass receive shoot and few other drills which they used to do every morning and evening. And while the second test was taking place in full swing, manager Makoto then suddenly started to walk towards them. Although he wasn't looking at their direction, he was definitely walking towards their direction. Noticing him walking towards their direction, Hiro started to feel anxious, do you think manager Makoto has noticed us? Shun too was starting to get anxious, he's not looking at us. So maybe not, since a lot of spectators had left the facility, there weren't as many people as before to cover them up. And thus, if they decided to run at that moment, they would look even more suspicious. The two of them tried to hide their faces and turned around to avoid locking eyes with manager Makoto. Manager Makoto however continued to walk towards them. During the earlier commotion, Makoto had already noticed them. However Hiro and Shun who were too focused on the guards, couldn't notice that they had been seen by manager. Finally after getting close to them, manager Makoto spoke, you two guys wouldn't happen to be Hiro and Shun, right? Chapter 128 Volunteers Hearing manager Makoto's voice, their hearts skipped a beat. Meekly exchanging glances with each other, they then began to gesture each other on what to do. Now what, should we run? Shun mumbled meekly, frowning his brows. Hiro replied in his muffled voice, didn't you hear him? He has already noticed us. So there's no point in running now. We'll only get punished more severely if we do that. And while the two of them were taking their sweet time, talking and gesturing each other, manager Makoto was getting extremely impatient by their unresponsiveness. I know it's you two. So you two better turn around this instant. Makoto yelled, hearing his furious roar, the two of them nearly jumped on their toes. They then slowly turned around to face manager Makoto.
Furrowing his brows and flaring his nostrils, Makoto was standing inside the pitch, looking like a furious grizzly bear trapped inside a cage. Didn't we tell you to stay inside the hostel? So what are you two doing here? Makoto questioned as soon as they turned around. Hiro quickly lowered his head and apologized sincerely, Sorry sir. I was just curious about the trial. Seeing Hiro bowing his head, Shun Tu quickly lowered his head and apologized, Sorry sir. He's new here, Makoto spoke sounding somewhat disappointed, while looking at Hiro. He then immediately turned his attention towards Shun and continued, But you've been here for three years already Shun. And you know how much I hate undisciplined players. And yet you still broke the rule and came to the pitch. Being a senior why didn't you stop him? Hearing manager Makoto's words, Shun could only keep his head bowed down and apologize. It's all my fault sir. He's not at fault, because of my curiosity, I forced him to take me to the field. Hiro apologized and tried to take all the blame on him. Hearing Hiro's words, Shun while bowing his head, turned his head towards Hiro. Looking at Hiro with eyes full of admiration, Shun was touched by Hiro's words. Despite it being their idea to sneak at the pitch, Hiro was taking all the blame on himself now that they were caught. And because of that reason Shun was starting to feel guilty. Thus, out of guilt, Shun was about to confess everything truthfully. But before he could confess, manager Makoto interjected him, I understand that you're curious. But you two have still broken the rule, so you two will definitely get punished later in the evening. But for now, come inside. We're in need of some volunteers anyway. That statement of manager Makoto was totally out of their expectation. Although they weren't exempted from the punishment, they were still invited to the pitch for the time being. And as Hiro heard that statement, Hiro quickly lifted his head and thanked manager Makoto, Thank you sir. Thank you for inviting us inside. Seeing Hiro's cheerful expression, Makoto shrugged, Don't get overtly excited. You'll still be receiving your punishment in the evening. Standing beside Hiro with his head bowed down, Shun who was about to confess everything truthfully was left dumbfounded. And seeing Shun still standing with his head bowed down, Makoto spoke, You two can lift your head up now. Yes sir. Thank you sir. Lifting his head up, Shun immediately thanked manager Makoto. The two of them then headed inside the field. Who are those two? An anonymous guy standing outside the field questioned. They must be academy players. Another bald-headed old guy standing beside him replied. Walking inside the field as volunteers, they were tasked with collecting the balls and assisting the coaches. And even with the addition of Hiro and Shun, the test progressed rather smoothly. And just as another drill of the second test was about to begin, Makoto called Hiro towards him. Having been called by the manager, Hiro hurriedly ran towards the side of the manager. Hiro can you demonstrate the drill for them? Manager Makoto asked him to demonstrate the drill that was about to take place. Hiro nodded his head. So everyone please pay attention to him. He'll be demonstrating you the drill that you'll have to perform. Makoto announced while pointing at Hiro. Who's he? He looks younger than some of us. Is he an academy player? Upon hearing the coach's announcement, they began to judge Hiro. Staring at Hiro with eyes full of skepticism, the players began to chatter about Hiro. However that reaction from the players was completely natural. After all until then the coaches were demonstrating the drills. But out of nowhere a young guy who looked even younger than them showed up and became the demonstrator. They simply couldn't help but fell doubtful about the ability of Hiro. And among those doubtful eyes, one person raised his hand to question the decision of the coach. Fair-skinned, black hair and good-looking, that hand belonged to Renji Igarashi. Seeing his raised hands, manager Makoto answered, yes. Without any hesitation, Renji first scanned Hiro a bit and answered, sorry sir if I sound disrespectful. But this guy looks even younger than some of us. So I just can't help but question why you decided to make him our drill instructor. Would he even be able to demonstrate the drill properly? Faced with Renji's question, Makoto grinned and replied, He's been doing these drills for six, seven months now. So I'm sure he can demonstrate the skill well. Hearing Makoto's claims about Hiro, Renji put his hands down and silently nodded his head. He had no intention to challenge the authority of the coaches. So if all of your doubts have been cleared up then shall we continue the test? Makoto intoned while tapping his hands gently. Hearing the coach's question, nobody spoke anything and they all remained completely silent. After that they all made their way outside the pitch, towards the sidelines. Hiro on the other hand made his way towards the right flank. Standing 40 yards away from the goalpost, he positioned himself in the right flank preparing to make his run. The drill which they were going to perform that time was quite simple. 
From 40 yards away he'd have to make his run towards the goalpost while another player would supply him with the cross from the left flank. And he'd have to sprint so that he could receive the cross. And after receiving the cross, he'd have to either shoot the ball without trapping or shoot the ball after. Trapping. The post wasn't obviously empty, since there was a net placed in front of the post. And only the bottom and the top corner had a hole in the net. So along with running and shooting, he'd have to score the goal in those four corners as well. Chapter 129 Worthy 1. That drill was specifically designed to test their speed and precision. And as Hiro positioned himself to make the run, manager Makoto said to the players, everyone pay attention now. Getting everyone's attention, manager Makoto then sounded the whistle which he was carrying inside his pocket. Beep. Hearing the sound of the whistle, Hiro started to make his run. Just in mere few seconds, he achieved his top acceleration. Sprinting like a wild horse, he sprinted towards the goalpost. At the same time, coach Kensuke who was tasked with crossing the ball towards Hiro, released the ball from his feet. Witnessing his speed, every player who were standing on the sidelines looked at him with their eyes open wide. And even those players who were proud of their pace couldn't stop themselves from looking at Hiro in awe. They all were stunned. Shun who was rather focused on the players instead of Hiro, curled his lips slightly and mumbled in a satiated manner, as expected. The ball released from coach Kensuke's feet was directly heading towards the outer edge of the penalty box. And Hiro who had already predicted the path of the ball, slightly lifted himself up from the ground and gently trapped the ball in his chest. Without wasting any time, he then launched the ball towards the top left corner of the post. Witnessing his otherworldly volley, the players present in the field, all of them held their breaths. The ball swiftly flew towards the hole in the top left corner and landed inside the post. And just as the ball landed inside the post, almost all the players burst out into celebration. As if it was them who had scored the goal, they simply couldn't hold back themselves from celebrating. Whoa! Players began to cheer as the ball landed inside the post. Although it was only a demonstration, to them it felt like watching a veteran player performing his magic. Hearing their cheers, Makoto's lips curled as he revealed a subtle smile on his face. He looked satiated as if his purpose had been fulfilled. The whole reason behind asking Hiro to demonstrate the drill was to uplift the mood of the players. And judging by the reaction which the players were displaying, manager Makoto believed that his purpose had been fulfilled. While almost every player were cheering for him, there were few players who were still not satisfied with the demonstration. They were saying, it was just a coincident or hero had been lucky. To rile up the players even more and to clear the doubts of the doubtful players, Makoto shouted, once more. But this time no trapping. You have to perform one shot volley towards the bottom right corner of the post. Without replying anything, Hiro simply nodded his head and walked back towards his position. What? He's doing it again and he have to do it according to the manager's will. Frowning their brows, some players started to feel concerned. They felt that manager was just pushing him too much and he couldn't do it as mentioned by the manager. Just trapping that insane cross is already difficult, and he wants to make him perform one-shot volley. Furthermore he also needs to aim the ball at the selected place. One of the players commented while staring at the post. The gaps in the nets were barely big enough to fit two footballs. And to score a one-shot volley from outside the box while also analyzing the trajectory of the ball, it seemed near to impossible without perfect ball control, vision and precision. And as the players started to chatter, the ambience around the field suddenly started to get a little noisy. Okay then everyone pay attention again. After all, after this demonstration it's your turn to perform. Shouted manager Makoto to make them shut their mouths. Hearing the command of the manager, they then immediately shut their mouth and focused their attention towards Hiro. Ready Hiro, Makoto yelled, keeping his gaze fixated at the post in front, Hiro nodded his head. Beep. Once again as soon as he heard the sound of the whistle, Hiro took a quick glance at coach Kensuke and sprinted towards the goalpost. That time around there was an unusual spin on the ball. It's heading inside the box. He thought after predicting the trajectory of the ball. Wait no, it's curving. After attaining its maximum height, the ball curved. And because of that curve, Hiro too decelerated. He's decelerating, mumbled one of the players after noticing Hiro's deceleration. The ball then began to fall down towards the penalty arc. Right before the ball fell down, Hiro stretched his right leg. And just as the ball was about to hit the ground, his feet made contact with the ball. Bam! Sound similar to that of balloon exploding reverberated just as Hiro's leg made contact with the ball. Swoosh! Without touching the blocking net, 
The ball passed through the hole in the bottom right corner and made a swoosh sound as it made contact with the net of the post. The already shocked players were now even more shocked. They were all speechless, as if their brain couldn't even process all the information, they simply stood on their spot, completely dazed. Finally one of the player broke the silence, so this is the level of Kawasaki Frontale's U18 team. Our other player in the team, monsters like him, mumbled another guy while staring at Hiro with his eyes wide open. As if their soul had left their body, some of the players looked quite gloomy. While there were few players who were standing on their toes looking quite excited. Among them one was Akihiro Yamada. With a crooked smile on his face, his eyes were gleaming with excitement. I need to get in this team. No matter what, I need to get selected. Only such players can receive my passes. Thought Akihiro looking all excited. Now then the demonstration is over. So shall we continue our test? Manager Makoto spoke. Makoto's words brought everybody back to their senses. Few of the players who looked excited, replied cheerfully, yes sir. Chapter 130 Punishment During the evening time, when the sky dusked and the shadows got long and hard, silhouette of two persons were seen moving in the field. Running laps around the field, Hiro and Shun were getting punished for their earlier actions. While Hiro looked completely fine, the same couldn't be said to Shun. Sweaty, out of breath and his tongue sticking out, Shun was extremely exhausted. Looking completely out of breath, Shun mumbled while trying to catch up to Hiro who was about 10 steps away from him, Hiro. Wait, wait for me, slowing down his pace, Hiro whose shirt was already soaked with his sweat, replied, hurry up. We still have five more laps left. Five more laps, with the pitch of his voice increasing, Shun exasperated as if he was on the verge of collapsing. Huff, 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 panting heavily and running as if he had hurt his legs, Shun continued, we've already run 20 laps around the field. With his feet twitching and his leg muscles convulsing, Shun was starting to stumble. Hiro who had already been holding back himself by running alongside Shun, matching his pace, turned around. And as he turned around, Hiro found Shun wobbling while trying his best to prevent himself from collapsing out. Of exhaustion and pain, seeing the miserable state of Shun, Hiro ran backwards and grabbed Shun's arm and prevented him from falling down. We've already run 20 laps, so let's give our best and complete this 5 more laps and complete our punishment. Hiro tried to encourage Shun. It's not fair, you're a midfielder, so running 25 laps isn't a big deal for you. But I'm a goalkeeper, Shun complained about the unfairness of the punishment. The most I've ever run is 15 laps. And today I've already broken my own record. My feet is already turning numb from pain. And it feels like I'm carrying 20 kilograms weight in my feet. Every step feels so heavy. Shun continued to whine. Even so, with Hiro's support, he didn't stop. And despite the pain, he continued to run. Finally after about 20 minutes more, Shun completed the punishment alongside Hiro who supported him and prevented him from falling down midway. Completely exhausted and drenched in sweat, Shun collapsed on the ground just as Hiro released him. Good work there. Hiro complimented Shun for his perseverance, trying to cheer him up. You've set a new record for yourself. Shun who was lying on the ground was struggling to stabilize his breath. His heart was racing and his face looked flushed. And because of the exhaustion, he couldn't even bring himself to speak. Witnessing his miserable state, Hiro bent down and grabbed Shun's legs. He then began to massage Shun's leg to prevent it from cramping. While massaging Shun's legs, Hiro asked with a concerned look on his face, Are you alright? Or should I inform coach and ask him to take you to the infirmary? While lying on the pitch, Shun shook his head. He then lifted his hand and gave him a thumbs up. Witnessing his gesture, Hiro revealed a slight smile and mumbled in a low voice, Don't try to act cool now. I'll go and ask coach for some spray and bandages. Saying such Hiro released Shun's legs and began to make his way outside the pitch. While making his way towards the coach's office, he found few of the guys of U18 team sneakily coming out from the manager Makoto's office. Hiding behind the corner, so that they couldn't notice him, Hiro began to wonder the purpose behind them coming out of Makoto's office, Shitaro, Shunsuke, Takeshi, Yutaro. Why are they coming out of manager's office? Sneakily coming out of manager's office, they then hurriedly ran away. And since Hiro had hidden himself perfectly, they didn't notice his presence. Just as they left, Hiro walked out of the corner. Looking at the sight of them leaving, Hiro couldn't help but think something negative after seeing them sneakily coming out of the manager's office, did they steal something from manager's office? Or did they perhaps alter some documents? 
Since Hiro didn't have any decisive proof, he could only speculate. With no solid evidence, he couldn't simply frame them as well. Should I report it to manager? Mumbled Hiro to himself. But if I do that then they might turn against me. And it might also divide the team. So let's just keep it to myself. While he was standing in the hallway, thinking on what to do, he noticed manager Makoto walking down the stairs. Let's just keep it to myself. I'll ask for Naoto's suggestion later. Mumbling such, he decided to not tell about them sneaking inside manager's office for the time being. Hiro then rushed towards the manager to ask him for few bandages and muscle cooling sprays. While Hiro was gone, Shun was still lying on the ground. By that time he had stabilized his heartbeat and breathing. No wonder people like him. He's got such a pleasant personality. And although he doesn't talk a lot, you can just tell by his actions that he cares. Shun mumbled while staring at the sky above. Him, few stars were starting to get visible as the sky was starting to turn darker. Even Shun knew that earlier Hiro was holding himself back by matching his pace. That Masao boy may not even know it. But despite that you helped him without asking anything in return. His heart filled with admiration, Shun couldn't stop himself from admiring Hiro. But then suddenly his face darkened as he squinted his eyes, but not every people value kindness this day. I fear that someday your kindness will bring you big trouble. Although he was grateful to Hiro, Shun was also concerned about Hiro. Since Hiro was overtly kind to everyone and as a friend Shun feared that people will take advantage of his kindness. As he was thinking such, a gust of refreshing cold breeze blew past him. As if the breeze was telling him that he was worrying for nothing, the breeze woke him up. At that moment Hero 2 came back with bandages and muscle cooling spray in his hands. Chapter 131 Farewell Naoto Later in the night, after having his dinner, Hero decided to visit Naoto regarding the earlier incident which he witnessed. Including Naoto, most of the senior player's room was on the third floor. Climbing up the stairs, Hiro made his way towards Naoto's room, cautiously. Since he was going to talk about something sensitive, he was fearful to reveal the information and he was also somewhat scared to be found out by those players who sneaked into the manager's office earlier. Step, step, walking up the stairs, he could see the end of the staircase. But he didn't rush, in fact the more closer he got towards the end of the staircase, the more slower he got. Climbing the final step, he sneakily hid behind the walls. For a few seconds he stayed still at his place to hear any kind of sound coming from the hallway. The hallway however was ghastly silent. He then sneakily took a peek at the hallway. Bright light of LED bulb had lit up the entire hallway. Doors closed, empty hallway coupled with his fears, the empty hallway looked very sinister. He then looked to his left and to his right. But the hallway still remained empty and ghastly silent. Seems like everybody's inside their own room. Hero thought after checking the hallway couple of times. After confirming that nobody was present in the hallway, he began to walk towards Naoto's room, cautiously. Naoto's room was at the end of the hallway. After walking for a couple of seconds, he finally reached Naoto's room, completely undetected. Standing in front of Naoto's room, he then turned his gaze towards the direction where he came from, just in case. With nobody in sight, the hallway still remained completely empty. After confirming that nobody had seen him, he gently knocked on the door. Knock. Knock, hearing the knock on the door, Tatsuki who shared room with Naoto answered, yes come inside. The door is open, twisting the handle, Hiro opened the door and entered the room. Seeing Hiro, Tatsuki who was performing push-ups on the floor, stopped his action and spoke, oh it's you Hiro. Are you here for some workouts? I doubt if he'd have any energy left in him after that run. Naoto who was sitting on his bed with his back leaning against the wall with a book in his hand, joined in. Ha ha ha, you're right, after running that many laps on the field, I too doubt if he'd have any energy left in him. Tatsuki chuckled and nodded his head. While the two of them were joking, Hiro quickly entered the room and closed the door. As if he was getting chased by someone, he looked quite nervous. Upon witnessing his unusual behavior, Tatsuki quickly dropped his smile and asked with a concerned look on his face, Are you alright? Is something bothering you? Hiro however remained completely. Silent for few seconds, you can tell us if something's bothering you. We're like your own brothers. Tatsuki assured while trying to comfort Hiro. Naoto too dropped the book he was holding and turned his attention towards Hiro. Naoto being smarter than Tatsuki, he could somewhat guess that something was bothering Hiro. You can speak comfortably, nobody's gonna hear us, Naoto assured. Hearing Naoto's words, Hiro felt a bit at ease. 
He then walked towards Naoto's bed and sat down. Um, today at around evening time, I saw Shitaro, Shunsuke, Takeshi and Yutaro sneakily coming out of manager Makoto's office when he wasn't present in the office. Hiro revealed. As soon as Tatsuki heard about the thing which was troubling Hiro, Tatsuki burst out into laughter, ha ha ha. And here I thought it was something serious. Unable to understand the reason behind Tatsuki's laughter, Hiro was left dumbfounded. Isn't it a serious issue? Like they snuck into manager's office without permission. Hiro exasperated. Indeed what they've done is wrong. But I can assure you, they weren't in the office to steal or alter anything. They probably had snuck into the office to look at the name of the newly recruited players. Since some of us will be graduating from U18 team, they were probably curious about their new teammate. Naoto tried to clear his doubt in a gentle tone. But isn't it still wrong to sneak into manager's office? Hiro argued. Since he believed that it was wrong to sneak into manager's office without his permission regardless of one's reason, Hiro simply couldn't agree with their point of view. Says the one who himself snuck into the pitch today. Tatsuki joked, how can you become professional if you justify such absurdity? Thought Hiro while glaring at Tatsuki. Tatsuki however didn't notice his glare because he was busy laughing. Don't worry about it Hiro. I agree with you. I agree that what they've done is wrong. And I as your captain will definitely talk to them. Naoto tried to calm him down. Ex-captain, Tatsuki continued to joke. In fact Naoto and few other guys who were graduating high school at the end of March were leaving the team. And with the departure of the second-choice goalkeeper of Kawasaki Frontale Club, Naoto who had already secured a professional contract was going to play as third-choice goalkeeper for the senior team. Along with Naoto, Kazuya who had also secured a pro contract was going to play for the senior team. And rest of the players who didn't manage to secure pro contract and were also graduating high school were leaving the academy to join university team or other amateur or professional teams. Departure of old players and arrival of new players at the beginning of each new session, such scenarios were quite common in professional football academy. Yeah as your ex-captain, I want to say that I enjoyed playing football with you hero. I know that you'll soon make it to the professional stage as well. If lucky we can see each other in national U21 team. If not I'll have to work hard to play with you in senior national team. Naoto spoke while looking Hiro in the eyes. And while speaking such, his eyes moistened a bit. But to hide the tears forming in his eyes, he immediately smiled and continued, but just remember that it's not a goodbye. We'll meet again, who knows I'd even get to play with you when you turn 16. Ha ha ha, chapter 132 student ID card. Monday April 4th 2022. Just as the sound of the school bell chimed for lunch break, Hiro who was in his second year of middle school began to pack his bag. Alongside Rin who was still somewhat chubby, Masao who had lost considerable amount of weight, approached Hiro while he was packing his bag. And unlike before, Masao's face looked quite cheerful, he no longer seemed like that meek looking guy whom he met during his first day at school. Masato and his underlings had also been separated. And now only two of Masato's previous underlings were studying together with them in the same classroom. Placing his hands atop Hiro's desk, Rin leaned his body against Hiro's desk and spoke, so the day has come, huh? Hiro who was still packing his bag, nodded his head and replied, it's the day of my debut. Sometimes I feel quite envious of you. Like you've got good looks, you're good at sports and now you're even playing in the Premier League despite being only 13 years old. Rin mumbled while staring at him, sounding quite envious. Ha ha ha, thanks for the compliment. And as much as I want to converse with you too, I'd have to leave for now. The match will be starting soon. Hiro giggled and thanked Rin for his compliments. Hiro then rose from his seat and grabbed his bag. And as he was about to leave, he turned around to say something, aren't you guys gonna wish me luck? Hearing his words, both Rin and Masao smiled and spoke in unison, best of luck for your match. And as Hiro was about to thank the two of them, the other students present in the class suddenly wished him luck as well, best of luck for your match Hiro. Their well wishes totally caught him off guard and left him flabbergasted. Nevertheless, he was still happy to receive such warm well wishes from his classmates. Thus, he immediately bowed his head down and thanked them all, thank you everyone. After thanking his classmates for their well wishes, Hiro then hurriedly left the class. And since he was the only player from middle school who was going to play in the Premier League from his team, the team bus had to make a trip to his school to pick him up. Hurriedly making his way outside the main building, Hiro was running towards the main gate. But as he reached the main gate, he was stopped by the guard. Where are you going student? 
The school hasn't ended yet, spoke the old man dressed in guard uniform while standing in front of the school gate. I'm Takahashi Hiro, hasn't the principal already informed you about my departure? Hiro questioned in a state of hurry. The principal has indeed informed me about the departure of one of the players. Wait let me check who it was. Saying such, the guard began to rummage through his pocket. And after few seconds, he took out a slip from his pocket and began to read, Takahashi Hiro. Yup that's me, so can I leave now? Hiro nodded his head and started to walk towards the gate. But he was once again stopped by the guard, show me your ID first. The guard then asked for his identification to prove that he was indeed the student mentioned by the principal. Fine, Hiro gabbled and then began to rummage through his bag for his student ID. But he couldn't find it. Unable to find his ID card he started to panic, it's not here. He poured all his books and stationaries out of his bag, onto the floor to look for his ID card. And while he was searching for his ID card, looking all panicked, the guard spoke in his husky voice, no ID, no gate pass. Since he believed that Hiro would start to make some excuses by saying that he forgot his ID and plead to let him go, he made it clear to Hiro that he wouldn't let him pass unless either the principal asks him to or he could prove his identity. Honk, honk, while Hiro was searching for his ID card, honking sound of a vehicle came from outside the gate. Now who is it? Mumbling such in an irritated manner, the old guard began to make his way towards the main gate. And just as he opened the main gate, a fat old man dressed in black suit with silvery white hair and round face, appeared in front of his sight. That man was manager Makoto. Yes, who are you looking for? Answered the guard while looking at the man in front. And even though he had never seen Makoto before, he was still polite to Makoto because of his job as a guard and because of Makoto's appearance. I'm here to pick one of our player. His name is Takahashi Hiro. Would you please call him as fast as possible? I've already informed the principal about his leave. Makoto hurriedly replied, Is he the player you've been looking for? The guard asked while pointing at Hiro who was still searching for his ID card, letting Makoto to take a peek at Hiro from outside the gate. Witnessing the sight of Hiro in front of him, Makoto immediately answered, yes. He's the one I'm talking about. But still the manager's words wasn't enough to convince him to let Hiro go, sorry sir. But I still can't let him go unless I could see his ID card or I get the green light from our principal. Witnessing the guard's stubbornness despite him confirming about Hiro's identity, Makoto's face started to turn red from anger. Since the match was going to start from 2 p.m. sharp, they had about an hour and a half left to reach the stadium. Thus, the gatekeeper's stubbornness was getting on his nerves. However he still suppressed his anger and went back to get his phone to call the principal. And just as manager Makoto left towards the bus to get his phone, Masao came running towards Hiro. Hiro who was still searching for his ID card was too focused on finding his ID that he didn't even notice Masao nor manager Makoto. Finally upon reaching Hiro, Masao paused and began to gasp for breath. While gasping for breath, Masao took out Hiro's ID card from his pocket and handed it to Hiro, you dropped. Your, ID. Looking at the hand stretched in front of him, Hiro slowly raised his head and found Masao panting heavily. Taking off the ID card from Masao's hand, Hiro rose up and hugged Masao, thank you Masao. Thank you very much. Chapter 133 Kawasaki vs Maybashi I. After releasing Masao from his embrace, Hiro handed his ID to the guard in front. The guard then took a quick glance at his ID card. And as he confirmed Hiro's identity, he finally permitted him to leave. You can go, the guard spoke while handing him back his ID card. Taking the ID from the guard's hand, Hiro then hurriedly put his books and stationaries which were scattered on the ground, inside his bag. And just as he was about to exit the main gate, he stopped in front of the gate and turned around. He then curled his lips a bit and spoke, remember this face and remember the name. I'll be leaving the school quite frequently after today. Hearing Hiro's words, the old guard's mouth twitched a little. And although it wasn't Hiro's intention to sound arrogant, his words and attitude still made him look quite arrogant in guard's eyes. Saying such, Hiro then stepped outside of the gate. And just as he stepped outside, he bumped into manager Makoto who was coming towards the gate with his phone. Upon getting bumped with Hiro, manager Makoto nearly dropped his phone. However he still somehow managed to save his phone from falling down. Sorry sir. Sorry sir. Hiro began to apologize. It's okay. I was just about to call your principal. But since you're already out here, let's hurry. Makoto spoke in a hurry. Let's go. We have to reach the venue as soon as possible. The two of them then hurriedly rushed towards the bus. After boarding the bus, 
Hiro then walked towards the empty seat beside Shun. Took you quite long, Shun commented. Well I lost my ID and the guard wasn't willing to let me go without my ID. Hiro replied, and as he sat down, the driver hit on the gas pedal. On the way, he elaborated about his reason for being late. After about more than half an hour bus ride, they finally arrived at the venue. Maybashi Iku AHS football ground. It was the home ground of the team that they were going to play against, Maybashi Iku A High School which was located in Gunma Prefecture. And as the bus stopped, Coach Makoto rose from his seat and spoke, everybody step outside in a queue. Don't rush, don't panic, stay calm and come down in an orderly manner. Remember, no pushing, speaking such manager Makoto stepped outside of the bus. Followed by him other coaches too stepped outside, one by one. In an orderly fashion, one after other, all of the players boarded off the bus. After coming out of the bus, Hiro began to stretch his arms, so this is Maybashi Ikue High School. Magnificent four-story building which covered a vast area, a huge gate, a huge empty space in front of the school building, few trees and decorations, the school seemed just like any typical high school from anime. And looking from in front, one couldn't even see the stadium. While he was analyzing the school in front, other players were busy taking out their luggage from the bus. Let's head inside quickly. Manager Makoto spoke and began to make his way inside the school. After walking for a while, they then arrived at the ground where the match was going to take place. About 100 yards in length and 50 yards in width, the ground in front looked quite similar to their home ground. However unlike their ground which was equipped with floodlights and sprinklers, Maybashi's ground looked quite bland as compared to their home ground. Well it's only natural for high schools to have such field. After all clubs are funded by several rich sponsors. Thought Hiro while making his way towards the changing room. And as he was making his way towards the changing room with his teammates, he noticed some players dressed in green and white jersey warming up in the field. They were the players of Maybashi Iku AHS. And since they were going to play in their own home ground, unlike them, they had already arrived at the pitch about an hour before. So they are the players of Kawasaki Frontale's U18 team. One of the player of Maybashi Iku AHS commented while looking at the direction of Hiro and his teammates. They look quite intimidating. Another player added, what's there to be afraid? They don't even have two of their star players Naoto and Kazuya. But even without Naoto and Kazuya, they're still a force to be reckoned with. So don't drop your guard against them. Player with number 7 on his back who was also wearing the captain armband reminded his teammates that even without two of their star players, they should still be cautious of them. Yes Naoya is right. Another player with number 10 on his back nodded his head. Just as Hiro and his teammates finished changing into their black and blue jersey, manager Makoto entered the locker room. Seeing manager Makoto, everybody sat down and shut their mouth. Has everyone finished changing? Manager Makoto questioned them while standing in the middle. All of them nodded their head. Then let's go through our strategy once again. Speaking such, he walked towards the strategy board. Everybody, now pay attention. Our opponents although they aren't considered one of the favorites to win the tournament, they are still a tough nut to crack. In previous season, they had conceded only 28 goals. If not the lowest, one of the lowest in the league. So you can tell that they're quite good at defending. And they'll stick to their usual counter-attacking playstyle. So watch out for their longs balls. They are also brilliant at executing offside traps. So keep that in mind and don't fall. For it, also pay special attention to their number 7, Naoya. As I've said before, he has very quick feet and he's also insanely good at shooting. So try to limit his shooting space as much as you can. And you hero, you try to hold the ball as much as you can. That way you can create spaces for your teammates. But once you find yourself in a favorable spot, don't hesitate to take the shot. Manager Makoto revised the strategy which they had been working on for past few days. Chapter 134 Kawasaki vs Maybashi 2 Maybashi Iku AHS Takashi Ground Artificial Turf A little over its zenith, the sun was still shining brilliantly in the vast blue sky above. Under the scorching midday heat, players of Maybashi Iku AHS were taking turns, shooting the ball towards their post. And while they were performing some shooting drills, dressed in black and blue jersey with the crest of Kawasaki Frontale Club, Hiro and his teammates were making their way towards the pitch as well after finishing their strategic meeting with their manager for their pre-match warm-ups. Oh, here they come, one of the player of Maybashi HS commented. Pay attention Koda, we only have 15 minutes left before the game starts. Naoya the team captain rebuked. Sorry captain, 
Kota apologized and turned his attention away from Hiro's team. After that all of them completely ignored Kawasaki Frontale's U18 team. Completely focused on their own drills, nobody from Maybashi's team again turned their attention towards the other side of the field where Hiro and his teammates were starting their warm-ups. I know we've seen their videos before, but do you think you can crack their defense? Shun questioned Hiro while stretching his arms. Hiro however replied vaguely while stretching his legs, we'll only know once the match starts. Hearing Hiro's ambiguous reply, Shun frowned his brows. It wasn't the answer he was hoping for. After about five minutes of stretching, Tomiyasu Hamasaki, Kawasaki Frontale U18's new first choice goalkeeper walked towards Hiro. Short black hair, sharp pointy nose, double lid black eyes, Tomiyasu was about 5.11 feet tall and he was in his third year of high school. As compared to Shun who was only 5.7 feet tall, Tomiyasu looked like a titan. Hiro, shall we shoot some balls? Tomiyasu asked while fixing his gloves. Hiro nodded his head and replied, where do you want me to shoot the ball from? Outside the box, Tomiyasu replied and began to make his way towards the goalpost. Casually juggling the ball, Hiro made his way towards penalty box. Tomiyasu then gently tapped both sides of the post and tried to rub some grass, out of habit. But since the grass of the field that they were playing that day was artificial, he couldn't grab much of the grass. Looks like Hiro and Tomiyasu are going for some shooting drills. Takeshi Agawa, one of the midfielder of Kawasaki Frontale's U18 team spoke. Can we join in two senior Tomiyasu? Renji Igarashi, one of the new recruit of their team asked. Lifting his hands, Tomiyasu gave a thumbs up and replied, feel free to join in. But make sure that you don't humiliate yourself by going against this wizard. Ready senior, Hiro asked as he positioned himself to shoot the ball. Tomiyasu nodded his head with a determined look on his face. Asterisk 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 asterisk. After about 15 minutes, four guys dressed in bright neon green colored t-shirt and black sorts made their way inside the pitch. They were officials responsible for conducting the match. With their arrival, the coaches of both the team rushed towards them to exchange greetings. Okay guys let's get ready. Coach Kensuke spoke. All of them then walked outside of the pitch. After exchanging quick greetings and submitting the name, Sheet of the players to the officials, manager Makoto returned back towards them. Tomiyasu, go, gesturing Tomiyasu to head towards the pitch for coin toss, manager Makoto mumbled. Tomiyasu who was wearing the captain armband after the departure of Naoto, quickly rushed towards the pitch for coin toss. Winning the coin toss Tomiyasu chose to select the side of the goalpost that they were going to defend. Before they went inside, manager Makoto made a short comment and wished them well, okay guys then best of luck. Play as you've prepared. Hello everyone. After about a year, I Haruki Shimura, the commentator of the match welcome all of you to the third match of day first of Prince Takamoto Cup 2022. Today we have an interesting matchup between one of the favorites of the tournament and one of the defensive powerhouse team in the league. The commentator who was seated at the sidelines commented. And just as he was commentating, following the lead of the officials, players of both the team made their way inside the pitch side by side, lined up in a queue. The players of both the team are making their way towards the pitch. So let's welcome them with a warm applause. Not many spectators were present in the stand and only few people who had nothing to do were present in the stand that day. The stands which could hold about 200 people looked mostly empty and only about 30 to 40 people could be seen moving in the stands. Winning the coin toss, Kawasaki Frontale has decided to select the side of the pitch. Which means Maybashi Ikue HS will be kicking off. The players of both the teams then began to position themselves in their respective positions. Just behind Tatsuki and just above Takeshi Agawa, Hiro positioned himself in his position of attacking midfielder. With the loss of two of their star players and several other senior players, Kawasaki's team has promoted many players from U15 team to fill the void left by their star players. And in this match, Kawasaki Frontale has made a new record by playing a 13-year-old player. The youngest in the history of the tournament. Hearing the commentator's announcement, players of Maybashi began to wonder about the 13-year-old kid mentioned by the commentator. However since the commentator hadn't mentioned about the jersey number of that 13-year-old kid, those guys had no idea about who that aforementioned player was. Playing a 13-year-old against those 16-18-year-old to 18 -year -old kids. What's the coach of Kawasaki Frontale's team thinking? Sounding somewhat annoyed, a grumpy old man standing in the stand mumbled. Interesting. I wonder how talented that kid would be for a professional team to make such decision. 
Another anonymous individual in the stand mumbled with a smile on his face. Hearing the announcement of the commentator, the spectators in the crowd displayed different mixed reactions. Some were annoyed, some pitying while some were excited about seeing that aforementioned player. Beep. With the sound of referee's whistle, the match between Kawasaki Frontale U18 team and Maybashi Ikue HS commenced at exactly 2 p.m. sharp. Kicking the ball back to his team's midfielder, Naoya began to fall back. Tatsuki and other forwards of Hiro's team, calmly chased after the ball. Without rushing, they began to chase while maintaining their positions. Chapter 135 Kawasaki vs Maybashi 3 For first few minutes players of Maybashi Ikue HS tried their best to attract the players of Kawasaki Frontale by playing the ball in their middle third and defensive third. However Kawasaki Frontale's players weren't as stupid enough to fall for their obvious trap. They had been studying Maybashi's gameplay for about a week. Maybashi Ikue HS often tried to lure their opponents into their defensive third for the first 15 minutes of the game. And after luring their opponents towards their defensive third, they would often play long ball in the flanks towards their wingers who would later make use of their pace and dribble the ball towards the opponent team's defensive third. Their wingers would then cross the ball towards their center forward who would then finish the job. TCH they're not coming for the ball. One of the center back of Maybashi Ikue HS clicked his tongue after seeing Kawasaki Frontale players' unwillingness to charge ahead for the ball. What happened to Tatsuki? He's not charging recklessly like before. While holding onto the ball, Maybashi's defender with number 4 on his back thought. Just like how they've studied about their opponent's gameplay, their opponents too have studied about their gameplay. But since manager Makoto had adjusted their gameplay while taking Hiro's gameplay into consideration, they were playing totally different than what they used to play normally. The defender then released the ball towards one of their defensive midfielder with number 6 on his back. Noticing the pass Tatsuki who was at the middle third of the pitch quickly charged towards the player to whom the pass was designated. Maybashi Ikue HS were playing in 4-2-1-3 formation with two defensive midfielder, a sole center midfielder and three forwards. Emphasizing more on defense, their right and left midfield was somewhat full of gaps because of absence of right midfielder and left midfielder. Upon noticing Tatsuki charging towards him like a bull, their defensive midfielder with number 6 on his back started to panic. And thus, in state of panic, he left his position and rushed towards the ball, fearing Tatsuki would reach the ball before him. The defensive midfielder then returned the ball back to the defender with number 4 on his back without trapping the ball. Great decision by Yedo Tachiki of Maybashi Ikue HS. If he was even a second late to react, Tatsuki Siko of Kawasaki Frontale would have stolen that ball before it even reached his feet. Without wasting any time, Maybashi's defender with number 4 on his back, passed the ball to another defensive midfielder with number 8 on his back who seemed completely open. Great 1-2 passes from players of Maybashi Ikue HS. The commentator commented, their passes are quite accurate and fast. And just as the defender with number 4 on his back released the ball towards their defensive midfielder with number 8 on his back, Hiro who was preying on the ball while positioning himself at the center circle avoiding the gazes of opposing players, rushed towards the defensive midfielder. Good pass by Kumagai. But who's that player dashing towards Saito like a wild horse? And just as Saito was about to turn around and look for his teammates to pass the ball, Hiro quickly snatched the ball away from his feet, leaving him completely baffled. Yoda Saito has given the ball away. I guess he wasn't expecting Takahashi Hiro to close up the gap between them so fast. Despite losing the ball, Saito quickly recovered his composure and began to chase after Hiro. Hiro however didn't stop and began to dribble the ball forward. He then released the ball towards Kenta who was making his run in the left flank. Tatsuki too wasn't sitting idle, even before Hiro released the ball towards Kenta, he had been running towards the opposing goalpost to position himself in a suitable spot. Fall back, mark the number 7 inches shouted Kumagai, the center defender with number 4 on his back as he began to chase after Tatsuki. It's a chance for Kawasaki Frontale. Now what will Kenta do? He's getting surrounded by Yamada and Yato. While Kenta was moving the ball forward, he was getting pressed by opposing right back and defensive midfielder with number 6 on his back. While everybody were focusing on Kenta and Tatsuki, Hiro was sneakily making his run towards the outer edge of the penalty box. Unable to see any gap to cross the ball inside the box, Kenta tried to shake off his mark. He tried his best to dribble past Yamada. But Yamada was as focused as a snake which was patiently waiting for making its move on its prey. Calm and composed, his gaze was fixated on the ball. 
Unable to dribble past Yamada, Kenta began to dribble the ball further deep into the opposing defensive third. Not because he wanted to but because he was being pressured by Yamada. Yamada was pressuring him towards the outline so that he would lose control of the ball and the ball would go out of bounds. Closing in towards the outline, Kenta then released the ball above Yato's head, towards the outer edge of the penalty box where Hiro was making his run. Since Yato was guarding Kenta's back, nobody expected him to loft the ball above Yato's head instead of crossing the ball inside the box, towards Tatsuki. A magnificent pass from Kenta. I'm sure nobody in the pitch was expecting that kind of pass from Kenta. For a moment it seemed that Kenta would lose the ball. But at the last moment, he has lofted the ball above Yato's head, towards Hiro who was completely unmarked. Hiro then without exerting much force, kicked the ball lightly and chipped the ball above the head of the opposing defenders present inside the box. The ball then flew high and after attaining maximum height, it began to fall towards the top right corner. Maybashi's keeper who was at the left side of the post to block unexpected shot made by Kenta rushed towards the right side to defend the ball. Realizing that he'd not make it to the ball, he desperately dived towards the direction of the ball. However he still couldn't reach the ball and the ball ended up inside the post. G-O-A-A-A-A-A-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L. Kawasaki Frontale has opened the scoresheet. And what a way to open the scoresheet. That chip which passed all the defenders and even evaded the touch of Maybashi's goalkeeper. It was simply extraordinary. Magnificent. 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 His eyes open wide as if his pupils would pop out of it, the commentator couldn't believe his eyes. Chapter 136 Kawasaki vs Maybashi IV It had only been 7 minutes since the start of the match but Maybashi Ikue HS were already down by one goal. After opening the scoresheet by scoring a beautiful goal at 7 minutes and 36 seconds from outside the box, Hiro began to run towards the left corner to celebrate the goal with Kenta. Nice assist. Pointing his index finger at Kenta, Hiro mumbled with a big wide grin on his face, while running towards Kenta. Following Hiro, all of his teammates present in the middle third and attacking third began to chase after Hiro to celebrate the goal. Takahashi Hiro, remember the name. Not only has he set the record for being the youngest player to play in Premier League, but now he has also set a new record by becoming the youngest goalscorer in the history of Premier League. While Hiro and his teammates were celebrating Hiro's goal, the commentator kept on making sweat comments about Hiro in his cheerful tone. Don't mind guys. Don't mind. It's only been 7 minutes. We still have a lot of time left. So let's just do our best. Naoya the team captain of Maybashi Ikue HS, tried to cheer his teammates. After some moments of celebration, everybody then returned back to their original position to continue the match. And as everybody positioned themselves in their respective positions, the referee blew his whistle. Beep. The game then continued with the kickoff of opposing team. Casually passing the ball between themselves, Maybashi's players tried to go on offense. As calm as the sea, Kawasaki's player were in no rush to snatch the ball. Maintaining their positions, Kawasaki's player kept on pressuring the opponents without leaving their position. At 13th minute of the match, Yoda sent a long ball towards Sigaro, the right winger of Maybashi Ikue HS. Impressive pass by Yoda, but will Sigaro be able to make use of that pass? Minato the left back of Kawasaki Frontale is also rushing towards the ball. Noticing the ball which was flying towards his direction, Minato the left back of Kawasaki Frontale left his position to defend the long ball aimed at Sigaro. The ball was falling right between the two of them and it was only a matter of pace. Battling for the ball, both of them reached the ball at the same time. And since the ball was still in the midair, both of them jumped almost at the same time. However Sidoro was no match to physically strong Minato. Clashing against Minato, Sidoro fell down before he could touch the ball. On the other hand, Minato who was still levitating on the air, headed the ball away and successfully managed to defend the incoming ball. That's what Minato thought, however the referee was thinking something else. Great defending by Minato. His physicality is no joke. But Sidoro doesn't look fine. Seeing the sight of Sidoro, lying in the ground, moaning in pain, referee awarded Maybashi Ikue HS free kick for Minato's foul on Sidoro. Beep. What's this? The referee has awarded free kick to Maybashi Ikue HS. Even the commentator couldn't believe the decision made by the referee. His eyes wide open, Minato rushed towards the referee to complain about that unfair foul awarded against him. How's that foul ref? He simply fell down on his own by crashing against me. Following Minato, other players from his team, present close to him rushed towards his side to support him. 
They then began to plead to referee, he simply crashed against him. It shouldn't be a foul ref. The referee however remained adamant. He wasn't willing to change his decision, no matter what. Faced with the referee's unwillingness to change his decision, rage started boiling inside Minato like burning tar. Minato was extremely unsatisfied with referee's decision. Only 13 minutes has passed and the situation around the pitch has already turned chaotic. It's totally understandable for Kawasaki's players to voice their unsatisfaction with the referee's decision. However if this continues, then the referee will be forced to bring out his cards. And as time progressed, the situation was getting out of hands. Maybashi's players were gaslighting the referee to bring out his cards. Noticing the situation getting out of hands, Hiro rushed towards his teammates. Grabbing Minato's t-shirt, Hiro dragged Minato out of the crowd and spoke, let it be. And stop arguing with the referee. I know it's not fair. But we can't challenge the authority of referee. Referee's decision is absolute, so suck it up and stop arguing. But I haven't committed any foe. As Minato was about argue, Hiro interjected, I know. I know that you haven't committed any foul. But do you want to get sent off? Look, the referee is on the verge of taking out his cards. Continued Hiro while pointing at the referee. Turning his attention towards the referee, Minato noticed that the referee was reaching his hands inside his pocket. Witnessing the sight of referee stretching his hands inside his pocket, Minato finally dropped his anger and quieted down. After that, Hiro convinced his other teammates and apologized to the referee for causing a ruckus, sorry ref. Since you're apologizing, I'm letting off your teammates with a single warning. But if they again question my decision, then I won't hold back myself. The referee warned as he slipped the cards back in his pocket. And thus, Hiro's apology prevented the referee from taking out his cards. Look at that sight, the youngest player in the field is acting rationally and convincing his seniors. His age might be low but his maturity isn't. Not only is he a skilled footballer, he also has a tremendous potential to become the leader. Singing praises of Hiro, the commentator commented. After witnessing Hiro's attitude, players of Maybashi quickly realized who the main threat was from Kawasaki Frontale. The player that they had to watch out the most wasn't Tatsuki or Kenta, but rather it was Hiro, somebody who was totally out of their expectation until then. Mark him tightly, we shouldn't allow him to roam around the pitch freely. Naoya whispered in Yato's ear while pointing at Hiro.